Hello and welcome back to episode 366 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Will, old man yelling at points, Hegwood. <laughs> and tonight I'm joined by Marcel, there's no place like home, Manzano. We started, that was like, that was abrupt. That Hello. was abrupt. Oh, we also have Ryan. Test it. Test it all. Stan Azuski. Yes, please. Do everything possible. Test everything, especially a certain set of cards I'll talk about later. Uh, and James Gibbon points. Ritter. Points have, have Gim given. Go, go test them. All right. We got a bunch of exciting stuff. Uh, Nova, XCC, and what you're all here for. Uh, XWA beta points uh, first impressions but before we get into those of course I had to thank our largest group of supporters our Patreons uh, head to patreon.com slash gold squadron you can uh, become uh, one of those supporters and help us get out to live events help us uh, be what gold squadron is we just came off of Nova and Salt Lake um, so a huge thank you from our patrons for getting us to those events, able to stream them. Very exciting stuff. We got some more events in the future, but we do need your support uh, if we're able to continue getting out to them. So check out again, patreon.com slash gold squadron. So uh, let's jump into the, uh, I guess it's the oldest of news. Uh, well, not really, because we're going to, let's talk about Nova first. So Nova was the North, Northern Virginia. I think it's just what that acronym stands for. Northern Virginia, uh, open. It was a large convention held in, uh, like downtown D DC. I don't know what downtown is, but in DC proper, uh, 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 over 40 players, uh, over two days showed up. There was a day one and a day two, and then a, or a day A and a day B. Two rounds, two heats of Swiss that culminated in a top eight cut. I was there for all the action, got 13 games on the stream. Very uh, good games, actually. Uh, most of them coming down to the last turn, last shot. Uh, you know, who's got what objectives. Uh, so they were honestly very, very cool to see uh, these players still coming out, still innovating on lists. We're seeing uh, new loadouts on old pilots and a lot of interesting squads. Uh, though, well, I guess I'll pull up the bracket, of course. We have to congratulate, if I can find it, I'm going to pull up the, the roll better here. Of course, we're going to have to congratulate the inevitable winner, Duncan Howard. Uh, I believe flying the, his exact Gen Con list, if I'm remembering correct, Ryan. No changes there. Uh, that's Jenden, Vader, Tomax, and Ferroth. A nasty combination of hard hitting aces plus uh, your support ships and uh, Tomax says I guess the filler uh, in there uh, but still I mean he's sitting hard with those plasma torpedoes I'll pull up the list itself uh, so you guys can see it uh, for the for the stream here there you go uh, this is SSP Vader, BOE, Jenden, uh, Bomber Pack. I don't know the acronym for the Bomber Pack, but the Bomber Pack, Tomax, and fair off with Tactical Officer, Ruthless, and Targeting Computer. Uh, which I do like having those two offensive upgrades in there, Ruthless and Targeting Computer, uh, really can change uh, how enemies perceive fair off. Because if you ignore him, he's going to coordinate. But if you... Uh, start distracting the aces or they get separated. He could turn on all those offensive mods. And we actually saw Duncan uh, use the targeting computer and then Ruthless Vader of all ships 
uh, to get three hits on his attack. Uh, so that was really cool to see uh, those upgrades being utilized. Uh, let's go back to uh, the bracket here. Uh, to, to, just to show off uh, all the top eight players here. Uh, we got a lot to cover tonight, so I'm probably just going to hit up the top four here. On, uh, so sorry for uh, those that didn't make it into there. Um, but to be honest with you, though, a lot of Rebels, as you can see. Six Rebels, two Imperials made it into uh, the top cut there. Uh, Pete Lambro. Did an excellent job. Got all the way to the final on what he said was uh, good vibes, <laughs> which I absolutely loved. Every, to be honest with you, everybody was having an excellent time, joking around, having fun. And that's uh, really what you want to see in these uh, top events here. Uh, Pete had brought uh, Gina and Braylon, Gemmer and Wedge all from Better Over at Yavin. Um, very similar to a uh, list Paul Heaver had made famous for going top four in Worlds with. Uh, they had brought as well Keo uh, with Vectored Canons and Juke. Uh, very strong squad. We're going to hear us talking about it uh, very, very often. This, this squad's not going away uh, for the time being uh, on uh, the Grand Tournament circuit. So you have to really be prepared to start getting a uh, idea of how these B-Wings work, why why they need to do certain things to self-stress themselves so they can give tokens to the other uh, ships, and how do you deal with these kind of squirrely A-Wings. Uh, it's been a puzzle for a lot of players. Uh, guys, I'm just burning through this quick. So, if you, unless you get, if you got something to say, uh, feel free to interrupt me. I mean, a lot of it uh, makes sense, uh, especially on the Rebel side, right? We know the B-Wings are good. We know Wedge and Luke are good. We know Keo and Gamma are, are good. Um, I think, I, I know you only mentioned the, like, you know, looking at, like, the top four, but I think because of wide breadth, that, so six of the top eight were Rebels. The other two were Empire. So it was strictly original trilogy uh, top eight. Uh, so I think what could be interesting to look at is what were the non B wings, A wings, uh, or X true. wings of that's the group. We'll probably and we do have one of the top four from uh, uh, <laughs> name name and roll better Rathos. Actually, D Yoon, <laughs> uh, a former, uh, uh, well, current Minoc, but from the former Minoc Squadron podcast. Uh, so yeah, I guess you're right. We we could we could. Honestly, skip through a lot of these copycats. Obviously, these players knew what they were doing. You can't just take a list on off of uh, the internet and perform well with it. I'm trying to just get to there. We go lists. I'll show them all. You know, in a better way. So what I say? So Pete here, uh, he had one of them. Uh, who was the other one? So Casey. Who I believe was the the other top four person. Now I'm losing it. Yeah. So out of the Casey and uh, Dune were the other top four here. Yes. So I'll set up Casey real quick. I know you're transitioning over to Dune. I messed it all up. But Casey, the other okay. top four player, uh, had uh, the exact same list as a note. A full mirror match uh, for their top four game. Uh, Gina Braylon Wedge, Keo with Juke, Vector Cadence, and Gemmer. Uh, so, to clarify, sorry, mirror match with Pete with Pete Lambro. With Pete Lambro, yes. Yes. Uh, and then Duncan faced D. Yoon, and D. Yoon's right. wrinkle in his list is he didn't bring the A Wings. No, that's what uh, I was thinking. He, Luke, Gina, Braylon, and then the big chopper, the VCX. He's always been a big fan. He always seems to love the VCXs mm -hmm. and has honestly commonly played chopper specifically very often over the years. Um, but just the strict, I dare you to shoot me, Saw Guerrera, Magviaro, Cruz. Like, I, if you shoot me, I'm going to shoot you back really, 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 really hard. It's going to really, 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 really hurt because the rest of my entire list shoots also really hard before chopper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this oh. list is designed to double modify every attack 
every round. Uh, between the, the two B-Wings sharing tokens, Luke and his Force, and then Chopper. I, I do love this build. It misses out on the turret, but like, man, if you're not shooting that primary gun, what, what's the point with your Chopper, right? Uh, but this build allows them to get target locks and focus modifiers for their attack, which means they can always use their action to just reinforce, which is really the goal um, of your VCX builds. You need to be reinforcing. Because what, they're a 12 health? No agility? So they can really get burnt down quick if you don't have that reinforce. Uh, but yeah, do you... Uh, well, it's just tearing it up. Uh, a lot of people didn't know what to do about that chopper. Um, having not seen one um, probably in a long time out there on the board. Uh, but yeah. Uh, plus the heavy hidden, taking Luke instead of Wedge for like long range bomb, uh, or bombs, but long range like attacks, uh, has been very successful. We saw him fly this to the uh, finals out at Salt Lake and now returns to the top four with it as well. So must, must be something good going on there. Uh, and yeah proves that you do not need uh, the A-Winks. Uh, you can't just go out there and play Savage Mission every scenario. Just turns out they can't press the button if they don't have any hands. Uh, so let's see, what is... Our next one down that was outside of the norm of... So I, I guess technically a little out of the norm, but we have seen this before. I don't know who Willow five six zero is in their name, but uh, they brought Braylon Custom Gina Sabine Tie Fighter Luke Wedge. We have seen that archetype before. It is a little bit different versus what the other guys are running. But Steven Wayland, the gentleman underneath, uh, had uh, start with a Luke Wedge normal Hera B Wing Custom. So going all out on that like I six. Alpha Strike because has Swarm Tactics, so could bring Luke up to six. Or the fourth ship in list, Benthic Two Tubes in the Y-Wing. Uh, Perceptive Co-Pilot Jin or so and Marksmanship. The uh, U-Wing. Yes. U-Wing. Sorry. U-Wing. Uh, U-Wing. I uh, Icon looks like a Y. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, doing um, the classic Perceptive Jin. Uh, so you throw Hera uh, Focus Token, and then if they need it, uh, basically, you know, the classic uh, Palpatine crew uh, theory of just wait until somebody needs that focus token um, or turn it into an evade with Jin Erso when it's passed away from Hera. Plus, she has our control system, so she could take her own lock and then give that out to other ships as well. Uh, yeah, it was a force to be reckoned with. I don't think a lot of people were ready for... Uh, the three I-6 attacks, and then Luke's Proton Torp to follow up. Not a lot of things survived that, to be honest with you. Uh, and uh, to me, that two tubes is showing, uh, similar to the Pharos and the Viziers on the Imperial side, uh, having like an I-2 out there to disrupt, to block the enemies is very valuable. As long as they're, you know, still contributing to the fight, uh, you can get a lot of use out of that lower initiative medium base. Uh, the next one, uh, their their role fighter name, Thames the Bofin, uh, had brought a another odd list here. We've been so concerned about Bistan Han. Um, with their recent changes pre-Worlds. I uh, can't take uh, the optimum Vistan Perceptive build anymore. Uh, so this pilot here had brought Han Solo with engine upgrade, Ezra Bridger crew, or gunner actually, I believe it's Ezra Bridger gunner, novice technician, and chopper. So Ezra gives you a force point, which is great for him. Uh, but... As well, you could do a you can attack from both arcs of your bow tie if you spend the force on Ezra. So it does allow uh, Han to get a bonus attack there outside of just having uh, the regular force point. 
of course, chopper, an engine upgrade, giving you access to uh, extra actions uh, while you're stressed. And the novice technician can actually fix some of your crits. I mean, you're a falcon with eight hull, so you might end up with a crit more often than not. And rounds out their list with uh, Wedge and Luke. No surprise there. Uh, and brings an interesting keel uh, loadout. Vector cannons, which you should always bring. <laughs> and ion missiles plus lone wolf. So, obviously, just would say, Keo, you have that whole side of the board. Just go hang out. Don't die. Uh, but if they ever turn their back on them, you still get that three dice attack at range two to three with the ion missile. And imagine being ionized and then this Keo like side slips behind you as well. Can be very, very good. Uh, we saw it uh, on stream uh, just launching a bunch of ion missiles into a Darth Vader. Um, utilizing like Lone Wolf to keep the target lock. All while kind of like pivoting around an objective. Doing those side slips. So I thought that was really interesting. I want people to be running missiles on Keo. I think the I think the Duke's a little boring, but boring also means consistent though too. So I see both sides of the argument there. Uh, what else do we got here? Anybody else I didn't cover? Oh, our other Imperial list. Uh, so does somebody want to take a look at uh, Alan's squad here? The very last one uh, we have. Because uh, we covered Pete uh, and we covered Casey. James, James I Ryan, think you were Marcel. good. If you were in. Was it? Uh, you wanna, wanna, yeah, you want to break down Alan's Galactic Squadron? Or Galactic. Uh, <laughs> it is a Galactic Squadron. Uh, we have uh, Rear Admiral Chirinu and the Decimator. With of course Vader, Death Troopers, Dauntless, Agile, Ruthless, and Baffle. I, I I think at this point this is the preferred loadout for Rack. Uh, uh, has yeah. all the tools that you need. Uh, is uh, has the Agile Gunner to you know go back and front or side to side. Uh, Tomax Bryn with that uh, Plasmex, just an awesome power piece. Uh, basically a uh, budget Vader because. Uh, we don't have any Vader pilot out here. Uh, we have Vizier carrying Palpatine, an amazing support piece. Uh, Lieutenant Lerere in the TIE Interceptor with Lone Wolf targeting computer. Uh, doing their best impression of Keo out there, right? Uh, we have, uh, to the round of the list, Major Rhymer and a TIE Bomber with cluster missiles and seismic charges. So just a, a great support piece. Not I mean, Rhymer's the one that can shoot those clusters at three and zero, right? Oh yeah, three and zero. Yeah, yeah. So Very it's a, cool. it's a great loadout for Rhymer. Still has some danger out the front, all the way up to three or at zero, as long as they grab that lock, uh, which they do have that roll lock, and also have uh, seismic uh, charges for some danger at the back. Uh yeah, yeah. We saw them. They had yeah. Pretty these ships beautifully painted red and black but uh yeah i think it's interesting that you you do the kind of same conclusion that like tomax is pretending to be uh fake uh, x1 vader out there and then rear is doing their best like soon tier impression um so really getting these like yeah. ace ships at a budget uh, which allows them yeah. to bring a whole other bomber in their squad yeah Pre pretty pretty great uh, a pretty unorthodox list too. Uh, this is mm -hmm. uh, a, a real salad of because that, that Tomax is basically a tie X one, right? With with no shields. Uh, uh, sure, <laughs> yeah, close enough. Uh, ne needs that lock to shoot three dice. Yeah, all mm -hmm. of the things. So uh, pretty pretty unorthodox list. Uh, I I'm glad to see it do so well though. Uh, yeah, I uh, it. It has a lot of beef between those two bombers and Vizier, and you even get uh, a speedy ship as well out there. So really hit checking all the boxes for what you need uh, to be successful in objectives and fighting other opponents. Oh uh, yeah, I agree. This is what I'm saying. Now people are still 
taking these pilots that we're all familiar with we've all seen in the competitive you know top tables and stuff um, but uh, putting them in different configurations giving them different loadout options uh, like uh, this rhymer where we're we assume that you just take barrage rockets but that's boring uh, much better to take cluster missiles and seismic charges and be more open I would say actually that the Probably the reason why Major Rhymer can get away with this is that Vizier and Palpatine support. So you're not just alone out there with a the target lock. You can't get coordinated, can't get that focus conversion if you need it for like defense or something. Um, yeah, uh, pretty awesome to see. Uh, of course, we're only looking at the uh, top cut here, which is a small selection of squads. Uh, there was uh, plenty of other um, factions represented, a lot of other uh, interesting squads um, throughout the, the two days of Swiss. We just uh, didn't, need, none of them had gotten into that four wins uh, needed. Uh, but yeah. Exciting stuff. Uh, the only other thing of note, uh, which was I was um, uh, uh, Sandy, I wanted to get your opinion on this. There was a little controversy. Oh, no. Uh, about uh, the top cut. Okay. Uh, okay. And the tournament structure. So, D. Yoon first day uh Let's see if I could get to his summary here. So D wins his first four games and realizes that he's the only 4-0 player. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, obviously I'm just going to ask for the intentional draw. As okay. you would, right? You're the undefeated player. I mean, yeah. that's, that's what you do. Uh, I did last year, Nova. Hope and just hope that your opponents also four zero and would like that intentional draw as well. Unfortunately, got matched up with Stephen Whalen, uh, who had uh, surprisingly low strength of schedule for being. I think he was at fourth or fifth place at that time, but he did not have four wins, so needed to play. So he says, mm -hmm. no, I, I have to play this game to get into the top cut. Uh, yep, reasonable. So uh, Dion double checks the strengths of schedules, realizes that four and one with a loss to Steven still gets him into the top cut. So he just concedes. Sure. Uh, and that put, that put him still in first place of swiss okay uh what's your what's your thoughts about that is there is that a fundamental problem with the event structure or was it just that it happened to be in this instance dune was so far so, ahead that it no it's not a matter. problem d d d earned his top spot in swiss rankings he double checked himself to see where he was in strength of schedule which is the tiebreaker to see if he was four and one if he's still guaranteeing to make it and be in a in, be in a good uh position for the uh cut which he was still ranked number one overall and yeah that's all within his right to do there's nothing wrong with that uh in the uh added drama to that was uh Talon and uh Mao Mao G is their name here. Uh Steven and Mao G were other the other three oh one players going like looking to get into the cut with their mm -hmm. high strength of schedule. But those two tied, which actually let Pete and uh duncan sneak in to the top uh four there uh these uh yeah you can see draw uh as the last i assume block. it was not an intentional tie for them no, no they had like played 17, out 17 uh draw eyes happen so yeah they, it'll happen 
So, uh, Steven, amazing guy, by the way, uh, but he uh, uh, found found a lot of luck to get himself into the the top eight there on on Sunday uh, through kind of the win given to him plus a tie, which I mean, how do you predict that uh, from the other table? Uh, so very interesting, That's... and and that tie though. Bumps because VC is 1.76, 1.6 here for the SOS. So would have actually bumped out uh, Pete had they both played. Or had there been like a winner determined? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, I think so. so I'm just kind of following your view here. Uh, I was just saying that uh, that's how close uh, Friday's matchups were of who was getting into the top cut. Was it came down to it? Uh, our finalists got into the top cut mostly because of uh, an unintentional draw. Like I said, just pointing out how close uh, every, these standings were to get into the top cut. There was a bunch of mm -hmm. amazing players uh, all throughout the event. Everybody, like I said, having fun. Uh, it is tiring, yep. but. Uh, uh, people were pushing through, so hopefully everybody had an amazing time. Obviously, big shout out to uh, our event organizer, Josh Taylor. Uh, smoothed everything out for the event to make sure every player uh, was happy. Every uh, you know, game uh, was uh, satisfactory. Uh, then, so he was the event organizer. Paul Heaver was the uh, tournament. Uh, oh, wait, no. Yeah, the TO. He was doing, or the marshal, I would say. Uh, he was running, uh, you know, the, the judges. He was the, the main judge. And then also uh, Kenton came in and he was help supporting those two, uh, running like side events. Um, and doing judge questions during the main events, things like that. Uh, but those three did an excellent job. They were very uh, supportive of me coming there. Um, pretty much anything I needed from them, they were able to accommodate. So big shout out to them. Of course, anybody who played on stream, big thank you uh, for you guys as well to make that uh, sacrifice uh, to uh, let us watch. And of course, uh, the uh, the Washington Hilton staff and the Nova staff, everybody was so supportive. Uh, the whole uh, Nova convention uh, seemed to run very smooth, no problems, um, other than the elevators. Uh, I felt like there was only one elevator working at all times, but that's to be expected, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I had a fantastic time. Oh, no. Uh, I had a fantastic time out at Nova, uh, and I hope to return on uh, the following year uh, for more X-Wing events down there at Nova. They open up uh, registration for Nova really early, um, so uh, we expect it to to get more details about it uh, next year's Nova uh, pretty soon. Um, so. Uh, Exciting stuff. Another grand tournament in the books. Uh, a repeat. Uh, was there one between Gen Con and now? I would imagine so. But Between Gen Con and Nova? I mean, technically yeah. the Utah one, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what am I thinking? Well, it was the same weekend. Oh, it was the same weekend, yeah. 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 Uh, cool. I'm going to try to steal... Uh, this picture you sent me, Marcel. Uh, but the next topic we want to talk about is the XTC, the X-Wing Team Championship. Uh, Marcel, uh, you are, uh, you've been involved with it in many years. Uh, can you give us a rundown of what the XTC is? Sure, it's the X-Wing uh, Team Championship. It's been, I think, I don't even know how long it's been going on. It's been going on for a long time. Uh, maybe like eight, nine years in person. And then uh, through COVID migrated to an online format. Uh, I think it was started out as a WTC and, and it 
ran alongside with the European uh, Euros, basically, what used to be like uh, the uh, Gen Con equivalent in Europe. And uh, yeah, so it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's 21 teams in four different groups. So it's four groups of five with one group of six. Uh, and it is a round robin tournament where the top two teams from each um, from each group advance to a final. And in this particular case, one of those groups has an additional team, a sixth team. So that one is going to be, I assume, a tougher group. And the I don't know the the exact rules because I was a part of the like the, the whole captain and the whole setting up stuff this time around. But typically, uh, it's it's each team has um, all seven factions, so all seven factions have to be represented, and you get two substitutes, and they, they all have to be from your. Um, they all have to be the residents or citizens of the country that they're representing with. And that's the part that I'm not sure of. With how many like mercenaries you get, how many non I there native... I believe the goal was to have majority um uh of so your players. minimum of four. Uh no no, well yeah, a minimum of four. Or, the majority uh, would be four and three, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. So you need at least four uh, representatives Man. from your nation or your organization, uh, then mm -hmm. you could slot in uh, those mercenaries if needed. Yeah, perfect. And then we, you see that little skull in Group C in the center. That is the pirates. So that is kind of a. I think that's just people that want to that wanted to play, and um, I think that's Funwalks team. Yeah, Funwalks team. Um, and <laughs> they called the pirates. They, they they've been filling in uh, to help, kind of. Uh, uh, get uh, more teams in the XTC uh, mm -hmm. for many years. So they're kind of just grandfathered in as yeah. uh, their own faction. Uh, I believe, I forget which team it was. Don't quote me on this, but there was a team mm -hmm. who wasn't sure if they would make it coming up like so very close to the mm -hmm. deadline. So uh, Fun Walk and the Pirates were like, well, we'll, we'll play just to even out the teams. Uh, but that team did end up getting players, which is why we have uh an extra team in group d uh mm -hmm. be just because they they didn't want you know the pirates to do all this work and then at the you know last minute be like oh sorry you can't play no sorry you spent months of work <laughs> organizing a team yeah yeah no and it makes sense i mean it's fine actually it, it works out better for groups a b and c because we all get like a bye week in between as a True. result so uh yeah so i'll just go really quick through the um through, through the groups and then uh, any questions and, and we can jump on. Uh, it did start this week. So yesterday, yeah, um, why we're talking Sunday was the what was the official launch of it. So it was the pairings. Uh, and in group A is um, the group A consists of United States of America, the defending champions. Uh, for group A, I will say the players, it's Ben Deddy, uh, Travis Johansson, Andrew B. Who's Andrew B? What's the last name of B? I don't know Andrew B's last name. Uh, Ryan the Milkman Costello, Liam Lee, Crispy, and uh, Isoplane, uh Daniel M. So that is Team USA. Uh, you, you'll see that it, I think outside of Crispy, is Crispy the only returning player? Uh, we do have uh, Joel Springle. Um, our oh, MVP yeah. from last year returning as a substitute, and then we have gotcha. um, I'm gonna butcher his name, uh, but it's uh, Winan, uh, mm -hmm. co cohort, if I'm not mistaken, and that's uh, the other sub, as the other sub. Um, both, and you still probably have Kenny running, and the, Kenny as a coach, yep, and then I'm uh, team captain, um, gotcha. So yeah, I mean it's a, it's a it's a good team. A, a lot of a lot of recognizable names, but uh, definitely it's a different team than last year. So uh, they they are looking to build their own their own uh, what do you call it legacy. There you go. Uh, and in the squad, so it's, it's Team USA, it's Team Brazil, uh, New Zealand. So that's not the Australian flag. That is uh, Team New Zealand. 
Then you have Southeast Asia, which uh, Southeast Asia is actually um, a combination of uh, the Philippines and Singapore. So they're, it's mostly Filipino players, but there's also a couple uh, Singaporean players as well. And then Team Mexico. Uh, and Team Mexico, I'll just go through that team because that is going to be the winning team this year. It is uh, Fernando Carabus as the champion, as the captain, uh, Carlos Yeager, uh, Gilberto Navarro, Beto Diaz, the runner-up at Worlds, Jorge Castaneda, uh, Arturus, and uh, your very own Marcel. Born in Mexico, so I am not a mercenary. Um, yeah, so that's. Uh, that is Group A. And by the way, we uh, Jorge beat Liam, so we Mexico is up 1-0 on Team USA. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, yeah. some results being already put in there. Uh, actually, yeah. this one's saying 2-0. Oh, there's another oh, team that there's a, a Oh, no, 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 because we all got to buy. Yeah. We, all, we all beat the buy. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so then I'll just go quick on the other one. So Group B is going to be Spain. Uh, then you have Scotland, Australia, the Czech Republic, and Serbia. Um, I think I think Spain's got to Spain and Australia got to be the favorites there. But um, then we go yeah. team uh, Group C with Canada, uh, the Nordic Union, which I assume is. Netherlands and all those other places up there. Uh, yeah, uh, they, this was a, um, an, an, it's been done in the past, but it was, I think, more widely accepted this year to where instead of having two teams filled in with mercenaries, they just combined their two uh, country, you know, countries region. together. Yeah, so you yeah, kind of so get like yeah. a region or so. So they're what Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, like that whole little Yeah. Yeah, that's the Nordic Union. Yeah. All right. And then you have South Africa, England, and Team Pirates. Uh the favorites there definitely one hundred percent gotta be Team Pirates. Um and they do have Levi from Team USA last year, so I mean the group C I think is gonna be the most interesting one between Canada, England, Pirates, and that Nordic Union. South Africa, I'm not as familiar with, but I know they've had a lot of good players come out of that region as well. Uh -huh. uh, so they got the work cut out for them. They're the underdog yeah. in here uh, against uh, four pretty uh, established teams. Yeah, this this will be an interesting one. I mean, I mean, seriously, it is uh, very very close, especially between um, those four. Yeah, Canada um, was the winner in twenty two. Two years ago, yeah, yeah. So um, we we can't win uh, West West Hemisphere can't win worlds, but we can win, win next. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping right. for the trifecta. Um, I'm. We're also rooting for you. We obviously mm -hmm. want USA to win, but we are hoping that Mexico wins so we can do the whole North America trifecta. Oh, uh, like uh, uh, yeah, Canada, the USA, American, then Mexico. Yeah. There you go. The whole North North America. Uh, and then uh, Group D, which is the, in my opinion, like the toughest group. You've got Wales, which is, um, yeah, so, so you got Team Wales, Germany, Poland, France, uh, the U.S. Islands, which is represented by the Puerto Rican flag, uh, and Hellas, which is Greece. Uh, so that is, I mean, between Germany, Poland, and France, and the U.S. islands, I think you know, no, no, no shade at Wales and and Greece, but um, even no shade at. I'm trying to not throw shade at the U.S. islands, but <laughs> France, France, Poland, and Germany. I mean, those those three are powerhouses. That's going to be tough. Uh, so anyway, so I, only, I, I'm, only I'm, two I'm are making it. through this group stage as well as no. So uh, yeah. One, yeah. Uh, three of these teams are going to get left out. Uh, well, this in Group D, four teams are going to get left out of the cut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and some 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 good teams. I mean, uh, 
it's, it's, it'll be tough, but yeah. you know, I'm Poland gonna... has missed the last two, <laughs> so I know that's I, true. I know they're, they're ready for it. They need, they want it, and we barely, barely squeaked past them um, mm-hmm. in the in last year. Uh, USA and Mexico moved on. And I think mm-hmm. they knocked out Spain and Poland. Yeah, if, if I'm yeah, remembering was... uh, last year's group stage correctly. So yeah, yeah. So, um, so hopefully, I mean, that's what we're shooting tough. for as well. We, we, we in Mexico. Uh, we, you know, we'd be we'd be happy to see uh, United States and Mexico advance as well. Uh, yeah, Mostly it'll be very because, cool. Uh, we'll be watching this. We're gonna. Uh, I'll be covering the group stage, which will go for uh, five weeks. It's round robin. So you just play everybody in your group. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Group D has to play five weeks to fight all of their other teams. And then there is a change from their previous years uh, to instead of going a uh, two-day uh, like top ten finals stage yeah. where everybody's playing at the same time uh, which is like very cool and like really brings the uh, like communities together and re- like feels like a uh, tough comp uh, or it feels like real like uh it feels like an actual tournament yeah exactly exactly right um unfortunately the logistical problems with that and like finding a good weekend for everybody uh it has always been a struggle. Yeah, and the time zones. I mean, somebody's going to get yes. the short end of the ex- stick always. Ex- yeah. That was what was the biggest thing last year was that we had, to, like, you start too early and you're starting Friday afternoon for North America. But you start too late and you're going into Monday morning for uh, the Oceanic regions. So, so like, just very narrow so window that you could even the, do the whole event in. Easiest solution is to knock them out in the Swiss rounds. Well, fair. Yeah, we don't have to worry about uh, we have we haven't got that majority uh <laughs> North America yet. But yeah. so changing from that, um uh, the the final stage is going to a week uh a weekly basis just like the group stages. So um if you're wondering like when is the finals? It's just happening after the group stage. We'll probably take a week yeah. or two break um in between yeah. the two, but and if it's eight teams, that'll be seven rounds, so it'll be a seven-week final. Yeah, so it'll, it'll uh, be yeah. a drawn-out final. Yeah, it will be a long final. <laughs> uh, but that's good. It'll have a lot of stuff to talk about, um, as XTC is uh, obviously using the grand tournament points. So I'll have a lot of information on uh, what to look out for. All of those lists are in Longshanks. Uh, that's where you can find these. Uh, I just had it. Is it this one? There it is. Uh, all of these are in Longshanks. Yeah, just look at the X Wing. Um, look for the user X X Wing staff, and then all their tournaments are there. I'll put it right here in the chat for Twitch, and then you can pull it. As well. Oh, I can't scroll up high enough for, to show it, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 2024 XTC on Longshanks. I uh, can find the different groups and you can follow the event as well. Uh, th- all through Longshanks. Uh, and that's where you can uh, look at uh, the lists as well. If you're interested to find out what people are flying, uh, you have all that information available on Longshanks. Oh, okay, well, this just pops up a, a list. That's a terrible example. A list link. There it is. See, so they'll show you all the, the squads and stuff. If you have interest in what people are flying, if you want some ideas for list, is a great resource to check out for that. Um, yeah, very excited uh, to see uh, the results of the XCC. Um, uh, I'm not playing in it. I'm just running uh, the team, doing all the uh, whatever Tony Stark says uh, in the Avengers movies. Like I just like design everything and pay for it all and <laughs> uh but uh i uh, know the players we we did do a combine for it. uh usa always does a, like a three-round combine to uh, kind of get us in that team um thinking for events and uh that was very successful had a lot of help with it shout out to 
uh, Kenneth, Stephen, uh, Paul, uh, Doug, um, and uh, I think it was uh, yeah those those three in general came came in to help support on uh, the combine. So big shout out to them and all the players of it. Obviously, fortunately we can only bring nine people onto the team, so had to make some tough decisions on that. But um, I'm super excited. I think we have a great team. Um, it's just uh, we got some good opponents uh, to go through as well. Uh, so. That's going to move on to what are you what everyone's came here for. Uh, let me find where 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 did I put you? Here it is. So if you haven't been following, uh, two months ago, X Wing was uh, along with Armada was officially announced uh, the end of development f from AMG. Not, uh, I think, a surprise to a lot of the older players um, for it to eventually happen. It was a 12-year-old game. But we were, I think a lot of us were surprised to have it happen during a competitive season. Uh, the obviously the grand tournaments are still scheduled throughout the uh, competitive season um there's worlds in march and there's even uh richmond open i think is the very last one if i'm not mistaken in may but these are all still going to be official events uh, after the sunset of development that stop of development from the uh, AMG uh, instantly sparked uh, a response from the community. Uh, we've been talking about the X-Wing Alliance um, ever since. Uh, we uh, have three members here as well uh, who will uh, uh, help out with this community organization of hundreds of people. I've uh, been working to uh, make sure X-Wing has a future. And now, after uh, much discussion, much playtesting, a lot of work behind the scenes, uh, we have, we see here, Ali, Greg, Dale, and Catherine have released this beta points version one, uh, taking uh, the uh, fresh take on what our points are uh, though very specifically said not going to make any any crazy changes yet going to work within the 20 point loadout uh, for the time being that could change in the future who's to say uh, what the best uh, or what the outcome is going to be uh, for that in the future um, still uh, we have uh, these points updated, they got updated on September 1st. There was a round table or a, a, a stage table discussion uh, that Nick had with Ali. Uh, there's a, I think Nick already got it up on YouTube. They can check it out. They did like a live presentation and a little bit more in-depth look at their thoughts, uh, processes going into these beta points. So definitely check that out. Uh, in their uh oh that's the other thing this information can be found at xwing.life that is a website that the alliance was able to uh, curate and does have the uh, pdf documents here and this points update all the information um hopefully you'll need for the alliance and their um New points and stuff all can be found at xwing.life. So, um, this document they have their patch notes goes through and j gives a little uh, explanation on uh, some of the uh, big notable changes coming through uh, for the uh, beta points. 
uh, things like bringing Extended back. We have, haven't had Extended in two and a half years um, for most events. Uh, Greg does his Extended with ban list uh, draft league, but I think most of the, obviously, obviously the official tournaments were never extended. Uh, so that's, it's something that they wanted to look at. Same thing about uh, overall power level of the game, uh, trying to find out where that sweet spot is for uh, what lists should be able to accomplish. Same thing, looking at the loadout system um, and finding out what, is it the pilot? Is it the loadout? Is it just the cost of the upgrades, right? Uh, so many levers to pull in the, the loadout format. Um, so it takes took a lot of testing to find what exactly is the problem with some of these ships, what makes them so powerful and meta-defining. Um, but we'll talk more about uh, the, the changes uh, to uh, those specific points. They go on to talk about notable uh, restriction changes to upgrade cards. Uh, they, uh, their quick examples were things like stealth device is now medium to large, intimidation now reduced to small or medium, and energy shell charges requiring a missile and modification slot. The the point there is that because it requires the modification slot on the energy shell it's difficult or impossible for uh, hyenas and vultures to take independent calculations and energy shell charges so it really makes you have to choose between the two in most instances but they go more in depth um, about it uh, like i said in this kind of uh, patch article and on that stage talk they talk uh, a lot about more about um, why they've been changing loadouts and slots and the kind of the thought process behind that and uh, the thought processes behind uh, getting generics, the non-limited pilots, back on par or some close to par with other named pilots and how to exactly tackle that unique situation where obviously if you just make a good ship uh, you make it at three points people run six of them you make it at four points people run five of them right so like how do you get a spammable ship to be good but not just spammed when you see it uh, which is obviously a difficult task um, but yeah, they go more in depth about it, like I said, through these patch notes, which I really do enjoy to see these, uh, not just, uh, oh, we put it up a point because... Uh, uh, up, or, up or down. No, yeah. there's actual, like, thoughts. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Hey, this, it's this, not this like, is oh, why we did this. Yeah, yeah no one's taking that. Take, take a point away from it or whatever. Like, make it cheaper. Um, oh, uh, everybody's playing that. Make it a point more expensive, right? Uh, Trying to go beyond just how often is it played uh, to find like a new power level. Of course, I must say, these are all beta. There's a reason these are beta. These are subject to change. And they want your feedback. And they want you to go out and test these squads, these points, and find out what exactly um, the effect of their changes has been. Um, so, uh, where should we start? Ryan, what's our what's our starting point here? What do you think we should tackle first? Uh, well, I know we now kind of so kind of pull the curtain back a little bit. Uh, we kind of plan to uh, increase the frequency of the casts again now that there's a lot to talk about with the beta points maybe not every single week but uh, we do plan on kind of doing a more in-depth view of each single faction in the coming weeks month plus maybe um so right now what we kind of want to hit on is like early uh, how each of us feel as first impressions right mm -hmm. uh and it kind of broke it down because kind of broke it down to like three sort of base 
categories, as in one thing from each of us that makes us happy, right? What's a positive thing you feel right now? What is what is something that like uh this happens with any points thing, right? Something you see and you're like, I'm excited to do that thing or try this thing or see what I can do with that thing, right? Or put this combination together that didn't exist before, right? Um, what's something that makes you sad, right? Like What's something that like, oh, I'm going to miss being able to do that. Or, oh, man, that thing went up in cost. Or, man, those two things don't fit together anymore. Whether it's like loadout upgrades on a ship or whether it's like ships, combinations and a whole list, that type of thing. And then what's kind of like neutral, but you're keeping your eye on it. Like, I don't, I don't really feel happy or sad about it, but I'm keeping my eye on it to like, maybe it's something I'm looking forward to maybe trying or something i'm like man i don't know if like i don't know if i want to see that cross table for me but i'm not sure if it's good or not but we'll find out together right we'll see what happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so kind of like go through that sort of thing for each of us here as early first impressions and sort of those three areas of how any player could feel right now seeing these movies so um uh, james i nominate you have fun <laughs> i don't, I don't do. know uh, I do want to point out as well, uh, the points are live. You can find them, um, I launched Bay as because it's an application, uh, and, uh, is doing some work. Uh, you might actually have to uninstall it and reinstall to get the updates. Uh, but on YASV, it's just a drop down box. You just find instead of your standard or your Epic or a quick build, uh, you just click on XWA and that will give you, uh, the new the new points and stuff. You'll know that you're not in standard because you'll start seeing these extended ships in there. I just want to touch on that for uh, those uh, wondering uh, how how can they start building lists. Anyways, James, uh, yeah. uh, what, what's your first impressions? What's your what's your thoughts uh, so far? So I haven't do dove too deep into the uh, point stocks and the uh, YASB, but I've, I've taken a look and seen a couple things that uh, that I'm excited to try out and mm -hmm. a couple things that I'm a little, a little bit nervous about. Um, I think one of the main things that I am excited to see, uh, and I'm sure Marcel will be as well, is Anakin in one at four points. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, yeah. I don't, especially at the loadout he's at now is nine. So he's not, he's not bringing a... Uh, advanced, or he could he could only bring an advanced proton torpedo, uh, but he doesn't get uh, like plasmas and uh, passive anymore. Uh, so I feel like he he's at a pretty good loadout value, and I'm super excited to have him back on the table at a at a reasonable cost. He gets plasma. I mean, he gets passive ion, right? Uh, he does get passive ion. Yeah, that's that's four dice. Uh, yeah. No, it, it's, nope. no, it's, it's, it's pa pa passive. Passive oh, homing. all munitions Passive. went up a little bit. Oh, yeah. so ion is oh, okay. So Five. homing, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 passive homing. Uh, not, you, not, can not you can do homing. You can do. Yeah, homing. that's true. Yeah, that's one. That's that's the range two. Uh, I wanted version, to. Though. Yeah, so not not the worst, but I think I would rather personally take, uh, like plasma and then something else. But, uh, or. If you're feeling uh, super spicy, there is that intimidation at seven now, which is one of the things that I am a little bit nervous about personally. Uh, with intimidation being back out on uh, on the board, that is uh, just makes me feel a little bit weird. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, they did make it limited only. And right, is that how I read Named it? Named pilot only, correct. Named you to, pilot. Okay. You, you cannot put it yeah. on a non limited ship. Uh, right. The and medium, was, small base only, right? Like not no big base. Yeah. base. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Uh, no nom nom out there in the jump master. Uh, intimidating like <laughs> yeah. four ships around. No nom nom. In. No. So it, it is at seven points, which is quite a uh, investment. Quite a chunk of change. Yeah. yeah. Quite an investment uh, for. For your loadouts, especially, I, I feel like loadouts have generally uh, gone down where they needed to and gone up where they needed to. So, uh, I'm I'm 
I'm cautious about it, but excited to see more tools in the toolkit. Um, and what else? We uh, something I'm sad about. I'm sad about seeing uh, defenders at six points. That's that, <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> that's <Yes>. sad. <laughs> I believe the year is uh, multiple. Um... The Delta squadrons are six. Yeah, yeah you get uh, three, yeah. three of them plus a Tie Fighter. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. If you want yeah. full, I mean, all they don't, they full don't get... throttle and ion heavy or heavy laser, laser. heavy yeah. laser, don't get... passive. Yeah. Uh, can you go shield? No, they don't have a mod slot. Thank God. They don't have a mod. Right. They they do have eleven loadout, but they don't have a talent slot, which is very yeah. important. One for Juke. Yeah. Two actually for Ruthless because that Tie Fighter could just like. That single oh, yeah. little pod tie fighter could just be the beat stick for everyone. Yeah. Look at me, I'm Tina. Look at me. Oh, yeah, look at me. Um, so yeah, I am. There's also I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, oh yeah, you could do. You could go collision, but you only get an ion, not... or you only get a jamming beam if you go collision. Yeah, I would rather have a heavy laser or ion cannon. But uh, yeah, uh, I want to clear out that range two in my bullseye so I could 4K. With your heavy laser yeah. cannon. Get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a bunch of barrel so I can uh, do a 4K next turn. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about that, uh, but we'll, we'll see. But overall, optimistic. I'm excited. I'm excited to start building lists again. I've already built a couple of Republic lists um, from uh, kind of like from like a 200 point versions. And just like, oh, what does this? What does that look like now? Mm -hmm. oh, so, I, awesome. for the most part, I can still do it. Um, was that all three of your things? Did you say three things? Yeah, I, I said three things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, why don't you uh, let us know what your first impressions are next? Um. So, on uh, what I'm happy to see. Positive wise, uh, there are some chassis kind of across the board in the game uh, that are going down at a cost they didn't exist before. Um, but specifically, I like the ones that have only been done to unique pilots because it's a little more controlled. It's better in a testing environment, right? You have the chance to try out this one ship, right? An example, uh, the Ozatuck gunship. I don't think there's ever been a four cost Ozatuck gunship. If there has been, it's been a long time. Wolfaru is four points with four loadout. That's the only four point Ozaduck gunship. It seems like a solid testing ground. Wolfaru's kind of fun with his ability. Cool. Um, the U Wing, that's a cool one. I kind of want to see U Wing at four points. K2SO and Bodhi Rook are both four. Um, but then there are some chassis where, like, there's a lot of scum chassis where uh, the generic is at the, the same low cost as the unique. And I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it's probably fine to test. Um, I'm just less interested in seeing something potentially spammed and rather seeing something as a one-off at that low cost. How does that play out in the game? Um, that's what I like. Um, they even brought uh, the Hyena Bomber, the SOC Hyena Bomber, down to two points. So technically two of them can because they're two-pipped, but mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see. Hyena Four bomber points for two hyenas? But yeah. Those hyenas don't have independent and they don't have grappling struts correct is, they are the soc versions um yeah they just have i feel the, like that that was one of those like on my short list of like things i would do in separatists like maybe if i brought hyenas down to two it'd be these two be cool. yeah their i ones their ability is not great their munitions not great um but they bring five health and those they bring five health with two points yeah um yeah, on, yeah. And, uh, and they don't have all their toys. They don't have the struts. They don't have no struts. No right. independence. Yeah. No energy yeah. shells. Nope. Nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. Nope. So I, I, th I think, yeah, I think, w I, I think a lot of these SOCs could probably be co go down a point, which I think most of them, or a lot of them, did. Or there was a lot of shuffling them. around at the low end of the separatist stuff. So it's very interesting to see where that all goes. Um, even even the. The, the Nantex, scary, ooh, Nantex COVID years. Um, there's a couple of them at three points, but I think they're oh. reasonable ones, right? Like, they're ones that can't take and snare. They're ones that don't have yeah. any crazy abilities. They're unique. Sperber, Cred, and Gorgol. How Eek. dare you disrespect Gorgol's ability like that? <laughs> oh, no. Gorgol's a, a mechanic. He somehow fixes things with his uh, tractor. <laughs> this tra 
yeah. yeah. I don't know how that works. Don't yeah, don't ask me about that. But <laughs> so, yeah, I just overall thought it was really cool to test the waters with some of these ships that had their had some unique pilots go down to a lower cost than they've likely ever been, and see where it goes. Um, kind of a neutral thing. Keep my eye on. Um, they're more like hypothesis questions because I think there's some things that uh, in XWA like they were trying to accomplish. And I'm curious to see what weird side effect or things to keep an eye on. So an example is, um, I know in discussions with some of the gentlemen working on the points team and some of the overall uh, inner workings of XWA, uh, trying to get list building variety blossoming in some capacity, right? Now, with how it was kind of approached, or at least one of the avenues of approaching uh, some of the point structure where there's a... I don't know if it's like the average, but there's a, there's enough as I skim through these to see that like, oh, okay, the SL version of a pilot is one point higher than the custom one, and then the custom one has less, much less loadout than it used to have. So there's a balancing point, right? Like it makes the SLs a little more desirable um, because now they actually have a significantly noticeable more amount of upgrades than the custom ones have the potential to get. But the the question is like, does this actually provide the the tweaking list building variety that people wanted? Because maybe there's a chance that those lower loadout value custom pilots will just end up turning into their own little versions of SLs, right? Like we think about Grievous as an example in the past. Like no matter what you would put on him, there was generally one kit that always worked well. How quickly will those custom pilots get to that sort of like already optimized kit? And I don't know if that's going to happen to all, common to a, a common amount of them. If it's going to, if there are going to be enough variety of point like loadout tweaks, because that's what a lot of the people were were in the community were asking for. It's like I miss the days where I can like little tweak this, little tweak that, and they felt like some of the loadout value and the the twenty point system was a little inhibiting of that. Now, I know the attempt approach is to provide the variety. I'm curious if that's how it actually feels as we move past the first few, what I would call the honeymoon period, the first few weeks of a new points uh, given out. Um, and then the other, my other question is like, does the adjustments to, because they wanted to adjust the game's power level. They felt it was like a little too high. Um, what happens as games play out? Do more or less games go to time? Do they complete? Do they get to 20 points? Are there more or less turns, right? Is <clears throat> it, does, does that lean to it making it more of an offensive output leaning game or defensive leaning game? And which one of those sides of the coin do we want to lean towards if we were to lean? So that's sort of my like questions that I have out there to keep my eye on, on the game as a, as a whole from these points. And then just my negative is just dealing with banned cards. I didn't want to mm -hmm. see them again. Um, I'm actually trying to pull together a list of like, because I'm, I'm trying to bro to get away from the whole broad stroke of like, oh, I mean, there's one broad stroke upgrade, which is advanced sensors because it did go down in cost from its original cost, which is a little bit weird for me to see a banned card come back into play and get a reduced amount means it's more available to more pilots uh, but overall i'm trying to find very specific spots uh where certain upgrades exist where i'm like I mean, even if they went up in cost or maybe if they had like a tweak in their uh requirements uh such as stealth device as an example stealth device can no longer go on small ships right um i a lot of looking the at stealth of, like three agility uh, Correct. Very defensive yep. ships going now. Now you're four agility, and now you're even more unkillable. Completely. Uh, but I looked around. I'm like, okay, is there something stealth device still looks desirable on at the medium and small base or medium and large base version? Uh, the Mandalorian uh, has a lot of loadout in this point, and he could be extremely defensive. And there's a chance that could be with stealth device that could be nightmare fuel defense. Uh, so. That's one of those on my list of please test it, everyone. Please test it, test it, test it, test it, test it. Or agility IGs. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, who can potentially get evade 
and calculate. We can get thrown and calculate yeah. uh, from A. Yeah, for agility, evade, calculate. Mando's doing the and same even... thing with his con- eye, uh, blank to eyeball conversion or just having an evade token in addition to probably child force because it's mm-hmm. one of the better upgrades for him and thematic. Yeah, and even like some combinations of banned cards on a ship that they we've never seen before. Like, I'm pretty sure most of the people here don't even remember that a card named Cato Conics exists. Okay, it's a resistance crew card that lets you basically change your dial when you would reveal it to a faster speed. Um, that or Season Navigator combined with Inertial Dampeners on Poe Falcon means. We have a kind of handbrake on 2.0 with this, basically. He can be almost anywhere at I6 in a Falcon that can still boost while stressed. So there's that. Please test it, test it, test it, test it, test it. I had had the Vietnam flashbacks when you said season. I'm aware. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) I didn't. uh, You brought up uh, traumatic memories of uh, dial changing. Uh, Thank you for that. Uh, (laughs) You're welcome. So yeah, this I'm trying to compile a list of stuff that I'm going to uh, really help or not help, but like push to the playtesting group to be like, hey, please put just put this through the ringer. Whether or not it's right or not at this point, whether or not we put it back on an, like a true ban list in the future, whatever it may be, let's put it through the ringer. Make sure like my what I've found is potentially the worst possible scenario for this doesn't just break things completely. Um, that's yeah. a lot, a lot of good thoughts there. Um, I, I do want to oh. touch on one thing, Marcel, um, what? your, uh, Ryan was talking about banned cards. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple back. here. Uh, there is a, uh, I'm double checking right now to see if there's technically two banned cards. Um, but there is a soft ban on Admiral Sloan as a 25-point cost, which turns out there's no crew carriers with 25 loadout in the uh, Empire faction. Uh, so it's soft banned. It's technically allowed if you had some sort of homebrew campaign or something that you were doing with your friends and you're like, oh, well, you know, you can take her or whatever, right? Uh, it is technically a legal card, but cannot be equipped to any ship. And I think the... I was trying to find out if anybody can actually take supernatural reflexes. I feel like there's one person who can. Anakin Y-Wing. Anakin Y-Wing, is that who it is? Uh, what's his... Yep. Uh, it's like uh, nothing else, I think, but it's a Y-Wing that normally cannot boost... Uh, and has very limited maneuverability. You're probably not taking it for anything but to throw real torpedoes at people. Uh, am I? Am I not? Uh... Well, they, so they're soft banned, but they're not. So they're legal, but they're not. Objective. They're legal, but usable. either no one can take them, or no one you'd want them to take them can yeah. take them. Uh, I don't see it in there. Am I? Am I crazy? Did they just not put it in? Let me refresh. What Anakin Y Wing? No supernatural reflexes. I don't see it on. You gotta, you gotta enable the band on. You gotta go to settings next to the randomized settings and enable. Are you in uh, the PDF or are you in the the ASB? I'm in the ASB. Oh, make sure you're in the XWA points tab. Yeah. Yeah. Format Uh, five points, twenty five loadout. That's weird. Hmm. Oh. Uh, What what's uh, supernatural reflexes actual point cost? Like twenty five or something. I would imagine, yeah, because you just said that it, it takes up his whole loadout. It is a uh, force power super twenty four. Sorry, twenty four. Speaking so of force can, power, uh, so sense on Ezra three point ship with sense. No, thank you. Please test it, test it, test it, test it. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point out that I'm mean, basically two banned cards. No one's actually going to put Supernatural on Anakin with no other upgrades. That seems foolish for five points. Um, so those are the start of the um, Shadow Band uh, cards. And uh, Ryan, I, I agree. Um, all these cards we haven't seen in you know two or three years uh, coming back can have a, a big negative play experience, especially for newer players who don't even understand that uh, the potential of I'm going to look at your dial and then I'm going to change my dial. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. There are, there are, there are know, people in this world who have never seen that, that darkness before. I'm just going to say, games like uh, Dark Souls and uh, what was that last one that I put like 200 hours in? I forgot. You played the you play Wukong yet? No, I have not played Wukong okay, yet, but so yeah, well, no, well, they they beat you over the head over and over and over again, and people like it. So maybe, maybe yeah, but anyway, uh, so the they're not they're not changing what? your controller. <laughs> yeah, not exactly. What, what were the three questions? To, I want a good, it? a neutral, and a bad that you're looking at. Happy, what, what's sad, a neutral? neutral? Just something that you're just like, this could be a problem. Something that you're just like keeping your eye on, whether what that means, like, okay. um, well, it's, it's not just could be a problem, like, neutral is in like you're keeping an eye on something, whether it's something you're excited potentially about, but you're not sure about right now, or yeah. something that you're like unsure about, but maybe could be a problem, right? But okay. not worrying about it currently, but side eye have something, <laughs> okay? I got it. So, uh, the good, I think the, 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 the number one good for me is just change, like, I, I just kind of tired of everything and i know we're going to go through xcc and the rest of the regular um you know all the way through worlds with the current points uh so the the best thing for me is just change just something new something to play with uh and i don't i haven't looked through the pdfs i only looked a little bit at the scum and i've been playing on the scum builder here a little bit um but overall it seems like you know, there's there's enough change to where the the meta's gonna shift, and and there's and it, I do see some broken things already, or some things that maybe you know. I, I guess everybody has a different definition of broken, but you know, things that I would not want to play against, and if I used myself, I would feel dirty using it. Can, I'll, can I'll, you give I'll, me one example of uh... okay, the the bad. Um, so. For example, ships. I'll give you one example. Ketsu Onyo, but it's many ships that can do this. Can fly with uh, with Forlam crew, which is take an ion or take two ions. Two take two ions. ions, and then the defender cannot use their green token that you chose. Uh, especially hard when you're shooting them and going to crack to them. And throw static discharge veins on there that mm. says when you get an ion, you can convert that ion to a stress to check to move that ion token to a ship at range zero to one. So that means you could bump into somebody, not action, or you can get close to somebody, shoot them, track to them, ionize them, and prevent them from using their tokens defensively, all in the same shot. Um, and, or, and, or you can track to somebody in front of you and be like, Hey, uh, Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader, you came right behind me. Uh, basically that, that's any, anybody that has static discharge veins and Forlan is a range one, do not enter. You have Defender Vader. You coming in for for a tough shot? I'm gonna shoot that guy at range three. Miss, I don't care. I'm gonna call out a green token and give you an IM. Um, yeah, that, that that's, it's been a, that's it a, was a very powerful yeah. combination in the past. They did errata static discharge veins a long time ago to say that to do the effect, you do need to suffer a damage. But when you're putting out okay. like large bases like shadowcasters, YVs, yeah, like, like who cares? I'll take a yeah. damage and ionize anybody at range one at will. Yeah. yeah, 
Yep. Uh, well, we've also now. Also, so so Marcel, uh, I know you mentioned Katsu Onyo. Although that crew lets you hold on to track tokens, doesn't let you give them. Oh, no, no, no. It's Katsu Onyo Palo because basically oh. it, it's five and five. So static ch static charges five points mm -hmm. uh, modify, and four lam is five points crew. So anything with a mod, is it a mod? It's called a mod. Yeah, a modification. Oh, a Anything with a modification and crew slot and 10 loadout can do that. Large, large bases. So, for example, all of your jump masters can do it. All of your, uh, basically, uh, Afro can do it. Like an African, probably. Actually, Marcel, I found this one while we were getting oh. ready. So, so a a medium slash large base ship with data stack discharge and four alarm crew is high on my is one of my is my list of please tests ones. But also, you can, on Afra, you can do four long, static discharge, contraband, reasonable upgrade for YV-66, triple zero, good for her. But the boss gunner got cheaper. So you could shoot twice in a turn and give out two ion tokens with that four long static discharge veins. You could, yeah, you could basically auto ion a medium base ship too. Yeah. So anyway, so that one... Uh, guys, if you're watching, uh, again, if, I, I understand the not wanting to to ban stuff again and go that route, but you know, static four lamps not the problem, static discharge should be 25 along with supernatural. Uh, it's just a little bit too good. I mean, there's so many ways for you to ion on yourself. Here. I mean, you can ionize yourself with an ion, drop an ion bomb on yourself, and just have that passed off. I mean, there's so many things to fly over a gas cloud and give that to somebody else. It's just so many ways to trigger that. Uh, yeah, I guess anyway. also the scum facts you're talking about, that ion bomb drop, you could take, the genius lets you drop after moving, so you could guarantee that you're getting ion and passing. Yeah, so you're dropping it behind you. The, who's not in the bubble behind you, so you're affecting the bubble in front of you, too, right? Yeah. So it extends it to like a, a range to ion bomb. Yeah. One that's a little less effective because it only gives one token versus sure. the back that'll give. Three. I mean, you'll ionize yourself too because you'll. It's three ions, so you're passing sure. one off. But yeah. you know, again, to take one of your, you know, a tugboat that's worth three or four points, and then you're neutering the eight point defender or something like that. You know, it's anyway. We get uh, bad bad juju. So yeah, so that is. If we're talking about a bad, that is a combination that I went straight to. I mean, like, is this does this work? And I was like, yep, yeah, it works. Um, the the good is I love 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 love. Um, again, I've only seen the the, the scum so far, but I do love really enjoy the uh, intimidation. I know James is on the opposite end of that. I personally love the fact that bumping has bigger impact. So anything that gives bumping and uh, positioning more of an impact for me is, is is a plus. So and seven points, I think I would even like to see it lower. So uh, I just think that there should be more consequence and more 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 consequence for bumping and more more benefit or more gain for forcing your opponents to bump. Again, I know it's a difference of opinion, but that's that's my opinion. So I, I like uh, I like certain um, band cards are coming back, and um, I I mean I can't say anything without I, autopilot drone. I, uh, I one just double checked, uh, and Merle from the A wing cannot take mm -hmm. intimidation. Thank you, playtesters, for recognizing <laughs> that awful combination. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, double, double, double intimidation, yeah. Double intimidate, uh, not good. Don't want yeah. that. <laughs> I, I'm pretty yeah. sure there was a short window when double intimidation Merle was a thing. Yes, yes, it very much was. It was very. Oh, but, you know, for example, one ship that I really like it on, but it's going to be kind of um, is um, Namlam in the in the uh, the rogue. Yeah, the rogue, rogue because it moves at initiative one. <laughs> yeah, no, because you, it moves at initiative one. You can you can get the bumps, but then it shoots at a higher initiative, and it it just it, it's fine, you know. And, and again, it's 
I don't think it's it's game breaking or anything like that. So I, I'm cool with that. So I like that. I like the fact, you know, I I, I like Teltravera. Teltravera is a um, a ship that I hadn't seen a lot in a long time. At five points and twenty one loadout, I can see myself playing it. Uh, and you can play with fun stuff like Kui, cool or Kui. I don't know how you pronounce Quill. it. Yeah, but basically, yeah, die, revive. Start yourself in a corner and start regenerating with with Queel or Cool or one of his his name is uh, Talon Bane. Is yeah, we just talk, we talk about Hera back in her BCX. Oh, she, oh yeah, I hadn't even thought. Actually, yeah, more more than Hera in the BCX, I love Hera in the little uh, a gunship. Or oh yeah, about. yeah, the attack shuttle. <laughs> yeah, because you, you give it a you give it a like a turret, and then it just bouncing around everywhere uh little small base ship bouncing around everywhere uh I, I mean i know we're getting into the rebel stuff but i don't even know how it works but i remember uh sabine in that little um in that little tugboat thingy with uh the Brie gambit so you have like mm -hmm. a focus yeah evaded sabine a lot of those stuff you know just the idea of bringing that back uh and the tugboats i think out of again looking at the scum Tugboats are probably at the top of my list to to play around with and yeah. have some fun. And I, I think especially uh, Zubio, Zubio with twenty three loadout, yeah. so many possibilities. I mean, it's a four point ship, and while we uh, try not to compare faction to faction, there's a lot of good four point ships out there uh, in other factions. So if that's I don't know, I don't know if it's good. I'm I'm saying fun, like a twenty three point Zubio. Yeah, uh, tractoring, double bombs. No, so I, what I put is yeah, I put pattern, cloaking, proximity, and seismic. Mm -hmm. So he is cloaking all the cloaking bombs, pattering, proximity, seismicking. You're getting objectives and just being a nuisance. Yeah, yeah you can't you can't decloak and drop a bomb, but your stealth or your cloaking device can break, which forces you to decloak. And then in the system phase, you could drop a bomb. So you kind of get the best. Hey, what worlds. a two out of eight chance, right? Two eyes on yeah. eyes on dice? red dice, yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's, and with the cloaking, you can always like force yourself two. not to be cloaked. Right. Two yeah. eyes on red dice, yes. Well, two eyes on both dice, I guess. There's always always a twenty five percent chance to roll an eyeball. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and, I, uh, I would... and neutral is um, so you said a neutral. Yeah, a neutral is uh, something that you know you're not you don't you're not sure what your opinion of it is yet, but you're you're interested. It, uh, in the six other factions because I have not looked at a single PDF at all. Uh, fair enough. Take it one step at a time. It's so much information to absorb. Um, we're gonna build some list. Uh, so uh, in a bit here. Um, so yeah, taking it one faction at a time probably the best way to approach these points uh for me um i i'm not sure how to start i'll probably start with um my neutrals things that i'm i'm not sure my exact opinion or whether their changes are good or bad i i haven't quite find found out what um the results of that is but Two things that are on my neutral list are uh, the standardized upgrades. There was a change to uh, the Y-Wings lo uh, wartime loadout configuration. That was a standardized upgrade. They essentially split uh, to where if you were uh, in, in that... Um, pack there's like a red and blue wiring the red ones um, are like representative of like Zori and kind of the more uh, I would almost call them scum but uh, they're people who would take elicits they're spice runners and things like that they did eventually join in for that final battle uh, in uh, the uh, Rise of Skywalker but the other half of those Y wings were uh, like, uh, uh, they were like patrols or like cops, if you will. They were like actual military ships. So they kind of split those two to where you're more scummier Y-Wings 
can't take the wartime loadout. They're stuck with the intuitive controls. Is that what that's called? Yeah, it's something interface. Excuse me. Um, uh, and then they, like I said, uh, so they kind of split those who can and cannot take wartime loadout. Um, and they removed that standardization off of uh, that upgrade, which um, I don't know how I feel about yet. Uh, in in that same kind of grouping, uh, soon tier fell, or is what I'm trying to call four tier, uh, <laughs> the number four, T I R, uh, to <laughs> describe four point soon tier. It'll catch on, I'm sure. But the that pilot, um, does not have a configuration slot, which means, uh, through my confirmation of uh, Maui and Ali and Paul, that they are exempt then from the standardized requirement. Because if you put sensitive controls on, say, Lerir, you would have to put sensitive controls on any other interceptor you take except for standard loadouts, which has always been the case. And now another exception is four point soon tier. I, I'm i going back and forth on it. That's why it's in my neutral category. Um, should we just take all standardized away, which is really gonna be weird for independent calculations? Um, is there really only, is there a fourth standardized upgrade? Independent calculations, sensitive controls. Vectored cannons from the A-Wing. Vectored cannons from the A-Wings, yes. Uh, so yeah, that's that's like what... I'm not sure if it's good or bad or not, um, but something I'm keeping my eye on is uh, the, the impacts of these standardized requirements changing, being removed. Um, do we even add standardized to other upgrades that we might see... Uh, you know, be more uniform to maybe like rein in some non-limiteds, right? Which where you can't bring, I don't know, whatever the case may be. So we're keeping an eye on that. Uh, my uh, happy, obviously, just new points all around. Uh, the the change in um, the kind of meta staples. And while obviously balance would be the goal, like peer balance, everything's balanced, every faction's competitive, every choice is a viable option. Uh, it's just not going to happen. That's not how this game works. But what I do like to see is kind of those rotating out ships that might not see play get lowered. Ships that are getting played too often, uh, going just up a little bit or getting nerfed slightly. Uh, I like that uh, seasonal rotation. I'm excited for that. Uh, so, uh, more changes, more fluctuations, I think, uh, keeps me interested in list building, of course. Um, I've built a bunch of lists. Uh, but mo uh, a lot of them have been uh, looking at uh, the the, redu the reduced price in pilots and the uh, cost of non-limiteds, which does kind of bring me into my sad is... Uh, the non-limiteds coming back. I, it's not that I don't like non-limiteds or I think non-limiteds shouldn't be in the game. My concern is that if you make a non-limited cheap enough, you just see a whole list of them or you know four or five of them in a single squad. The moment uh, thresholds, right? The moment something hits three points, now you can bring six of them. A moment something hits four points, now you can bring five of them in a squad. So things like bringing, uh, I believe, arcs. There is a four-point generic arc, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there is. Yes. So you could run Jag, Oddball. Or sorry, whoops, let me get to the uh, Jag. SOC, Wolf, uh, it's customizable, and three other Squad 7 veterans. Is that a good list? Probably not. Uh, is it concerning that that's possible? Um, definitely. Um, 
interested to see are would people even fly this kind of there's style also, there's of also a four point lat uh yeah i mean that's and that's kind of what i've been building squads to see of like replicating what people are not liking in this current competitive meta things like 50 health on the side of the on the other side of the table and like how do you even get 50 damage output into the other squad uh those things are um, sad is not the right description but like definitely like alarmed to see that those kind of squads are still possible um, I, um and kind of tying into that uh seeing uh that uh, there's wow actually i would put this in the good category a lot of two point ships were removed from factions no two points to beam i think the only ships or the only factions with two points are just imperials and separatist no and scum so, has the uh mining guild yeah yes scum has one mining guild tie uh the imperials have the two um non-limited tie fighters and then uh, Separatist has a whole bunch, which honestly... Well, Scum have. also has a zero-point ship. Uh, well, technically, but... <laughs> but it is uh, still zero points. It is a zero point. And a one-point, yeah. Marcel. A one-point. And a one-point. Uh, yeah, yes. but those, yes. both of those are rarely taken alone. Actually, you can't take the, the pub. They're, they're part yeah, that one, that, something else. No, no that one-point can definitely be alone, because you, you get four turns out of that thing. Okay. Uh... You and that's a one point. Well, you get three coordinates. You get to push a button. You get to for one point. If you push one button for one point, you 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 did your job. Right. Get get one and, block. And you push a button, a button the same turn or close to the same turn. Wait, Marcel, I I barely remember what that what that uh, autopilot drone does. When does it explode? It's it explodes at the end of activation. So it gets two. Okay, rounds so of combat, you but three. So you could actually go up. And press a button the same turn you explode and dare anyone around that button to take mm -hmm. the explosion damage after take, you to, press to, to, the take, scramble take, button. Exactly. To take yep. the uh, the okay. proton bomb, basically. Yeah. Uh, that's good because it, people are going to steer clear. They don't want a proton. And, uh, Is this a crit, yeah, so. though, isn't it? Is it crit. It's a crit. Yeah, it's a proton bomb. Yeah, it's proton a proton bomb. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, Will, that's... I, I get back to your point of like, there, there are some things when there's enough of them, whether it's five ARC 170s that blot out the sun with their base size, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. Because it's not even just, like, the amount of health. And it, yeah, honestly, it doesn't matter if it's good or uh, not. It's just... Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's good or not, because, honestly, if you target priority right in the certain situations in the board state and the objectives, you can beat it. Fine. It might not just might not be fun to play against, right? It, it's kind of... It probably is similar to how people felt going up against the, the Thai Focho that used to exist, mm. the eight Thai FOs, right? It's not good, just not fun. Right. Yeah, there's... <sighs> yeah. It, it, like I said, the... Um, whether it's um, mass health, we're talking 50 plus health on the other side of the board, like... 40, or I would say 40 plus health, it like starts to be uh, an issue uh, because now you're, you kind of need a specific list to just generate that amount of hits um, in 75 minutes. Uh, and same thing of three agility spam, like you're talking about uh, the Ocho there, was always a concern in the past. So um, definitely keeping my eye on like three point seeks, three point generic, uh, a wings, anything like that, that could potentially uh, just uh, if you're three points, we're gonna spam you um, until uh, we hit twenty points. Technically, uh, the Imperial Tie Fighters could be doing the same thing. You just bring uh, eight two point or seven two point Tie Fighters and a six point ship, which was legal previously, of course. But now you have more options in addition to those TIE Fighters because uh, some of those chunkier ships have gone down in price. So uh, I think that's all. All three of 
mine. The only other thing um, I can think of was uh, they, they mentioned about uh, some titles need cost. We were talking Soulless One when actually has a cost now. So it is a choice for like Grievous and some of these other Boba Labs. Uh, do I spend my loadout for Soulless or do I spend it for a relay? Do I, you know, what do I do with um, the cost of the Soulless One? I, I looking through the titles, uh, there, I believe there could be more with points, uh, specifically Marauder. It's at zero points right now. I feel like that's just an auto include. If you have a fire spray in the scum faction, it's the first thing you put on it. So, uh, make it careful, wait, 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 wait. please. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, just got to throw one more. I'm, I'm sure you already threw it on there, uh, okay. Ryan, in your little, or maybe you guys talked about it while I was while I walked away. But in your little bag of please test, I, I'm just trying to remember the things that I. Abused previously. <laughs> abused, yeah, yeah. Like the things that I loved and abused. Sure. Uh, informant. Informant is six oh, points. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So for those of you who don't know or don't remember, or started after the ban list, after place it after placing forces, choose what's ownership and assign a listening device to, and then with that you get to see their dial basically. Is I mean, very, very... and any dial peaking is always a concern for me, or dial yeah. changing. Uh, my short list is like trying to get very specific, like on this pilot, this could be an extra level issue. Yeah, yeah. Type of well, and 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 to be fair, informant being pipped now because back then True. when I used to spam it on three jump masters was was a ton of fun for me, <laughs> not not any fun for my right. opponents. Um, so one, I, you know, it's fine. Like, uh, of course you get to pick like their best ship again. I'm trying to think like Defender Vader or something like that. That Granted, that but, Marcel, as I mentioned, like uh, you can put sense on Ezra TIE fighter. You could put informant on another ship in the rebel faction and you could put Cassian and or crew was also a dial peaking type thing on another. So you could have you had to Cassian crew. Dial. You guess, what, and what if you it? guess correctly, oh. you can change your dial. Yeah, and they yeah. have to show it to you to see if you guessed or not. Yeah, right. yeah it's yeah. dial peaking with extra things that you could take advantage yeah, of. Blah, blah, yeah. yeah, blah, blah, blah. You you just guess, like, whatever. I you you see, like, that's one you, I have to run about. Away. Yeah. I'm going to guess you turned away. Oh, I'm like, gonna... oh, no, I didn't turn away. And you're like, good. Cause and and wasn't there, like, a later rule saying you couldn't fly them off the board or something like that? No, you don't change their dial. I have no idea. Dial. No, you don't change their dial. You just you just look at it and then can change your own dial. Oh, you, you get change to change your own dial, dial, not their dial. Yeah, so, so if there's two uh, clear possible maneuvers in a certain situation, the answer is you, you pick one of them to put on your dial, and then Cassian and or and say the other thing you expect them to do in case you didn't, you know, to compensate for the thing you put in, then so you can change if you need to. Didn't if if they didn't do that and they did the thing you already compensated for, then you just leave your dial as is and you got you guess quote wrong, but you already hedged your bets on it with your own dial. So it's a hundred percent correct dial. If there's only two clear options for an opponent ship to likely right. take, yes, yeah, yeah. Either way, you get to look at it. So correct. Uh, you get some so information. There are, um, at, are at minimum three potential ways to look at dials. Gra Gravin says they're not... a bunch of three point hawks with proximity mines. You see, personally, I see that as fun. That's I don't see that as looking. a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Is it? Is I'll it, take it, those odds. We'll, we'll we'll put it on the. Are you sure about this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, six plus a mining guild. Yeah, and that's the. I mean, going back to what I was saying there about um, like the non limiteds. They're fine. Like, I don't have no problem with you want to throw an unnamed uh, ship in your list. The problem is that you never see, like, I'm going to take uh, a generic Z. I'm going to take a generic uh, X. I'll take a generic B wing, right? You never see, like, these salads of generics. You just see the same ship cloned, you know, six times or whatever, five times, whatever uh, the, the maximum is. So I'm not sure how they'll address that in the future, but. Uh, right now, uh, I would say that a lot of them, from what I've seen, are playable. They either have, uh, they're, the, they cost the amount of the most expensive pilot, but they have the loadout 
of the most expensive pilot, something like the SFs was the example that the generics cost the amount of quick draw, but you get essentially quick draws loadout for it too. Or you can just take a cheaper named pilot for, at like four points or so. So yeah, here's here's a good example of like I just made like I have no clue if it's good, but uh you could have the the Rebels TV show dial peaking special where you could have Ezra with sense, Sabine attack shuttle who has her supernatural esque ability with Cassian crew, and then Hera who already has built in dial changing on her ability in the, the attack shuttle with informant. That exists. I don't know if it's that's good. Lot, that's a lot. But it sure sounds like a whole lot of adaptability and and a whole lot of feels cheats. Uh, yeah, I can't feel that way. Is Hera chopper? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, I, I think another thing to consider though is these things that we're talking about, the uh, the power on them was amplified when it was a just death battle. Yes, uh, for sure. We do have to see how, what the impact of some of these cards and some of these dial peaking and things like that are yeah. in relation to like, okay, now you know we're focusing on points and winning in different fashions yep. for sure and also with with dial peaking like road you know now that there's not for sure order of operations and you won't find out till after dials like there's a little less power with dial peaking but a lot of more power in my opinion to dial change if you know you know and the after road you get to dial change after knowing road then like that's huge advantage right um so, but overall, it's it's still in a case of like us bringing it up is our concern that it might have some problem. There's no guarantee, but we're putting the flags out there to say somebody, people go out and test it, give XWA feedback. They'll get a feedback um, plate. They'll get a play test feedback form put together sometime in the near future. They're letting this sort of simmer right now that people digest it first before doing any like major uh, feedback submissions yet so just take especially all the band stuff put it through the ringer because it's probably the thing that's going to likely have the most potential cracks in the foundation sure and yeah that's uh i'm sure everybody has everyone i've talked to has had a knee-jerk reaction of just like what my favorite pilot went up in price <laughs> um but it's uh it's worth playing testing not just building lists to see what you know the changes were so i uh, like the the thought process there of let, let it simmer take a, take two weeks play some games build some lists see what you think of it um actually is and remember it's not going to be out of beta until yeah there's six months after this is March, a six month yeah. beta for this so plenty of time to get it right to uh, uh, may, uh, to change philosophies if needed, things like that. Um, before we get into list building, is Hera VCX just not on Yasby? You're gonna tell me that I'm I in beta, and I'm gonna reply, yes, I am in beta. Uh, uh, reload your page. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I saw it earlier. Okay, fair enough. V v VCX Hera. Yep. That's weird. I don't even see her in an extended. I see it. I, I see think, her. Yeah, I think. I, I think you're on the wrong page or something. I'm an. Ex I'm, anyways. Click the honestly next to randomize. Click the miscellaneous. Saying, look, uh, look at miscellaneous settings miscellaneous and settings. uncheck enable ban list. Say so, uh, okay. All right. I guess that that solved it. Why would they? There should be no checks. Interesting. But the but you still get all the other band cards though, don't you? You still get like advanced sensors. I, I see know. everything. Oh, okay. I see advanced sensors. I see everything. I wonder if though if that will be in. Uh. Um. What, what do I want to say? Because uh, like right now you can tell that you're in XWA points. I wonder if there's a way to signify that you're using band list or not in your list building. That's a good tip, though. Go to actually, I'll pull it up here. Wow, 
I'm thinking of it. Uh, oh, that's not part of my screen. Oh, well. <laughs> it's to the right. It's up here. Um, it's where it says randomize next to yeah. the... There's a little drop-down box for randomized options and miscellaneous right. settings. Uh, so that's how you could find the Hera. Um, well, all the band list. All band list stuff, yeah. Exactly. So if you're trying it out, I need to unclick that. Uh, we just took a, a little bit of time here. Um, so I just want to um, kind of briefly just hear your guys' thoughts on uh, what what you guys do when you start building a list and um we'll we'll make some fun list or whatever um or bad list maybe maybe uh riot <laughs> uh makes another um dial peaking list um uh let's start with you marcel uh you've chosen the scum faction so i'll go over to the scum tab brand new points a million options what do you start looking for first when you list build Okay, so what? Well, I started looking for fun stuff that I that I remember. Uh, so I have different contexts than other people. Um, so, so you're going for like a nostalgia. But, you're looking for, to 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 play something yeah. you're familiar with that you haven't in. A yeah, while. things that I've been wanting to play for a while and and haven't been able to because uh, either they're not good or, um, yeah, either they're not good or they're not um, in. In extent, I mean, they're extended in that or band. So, uh, the first thing that 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 my mind went to was Han Solo with autopilot drone because that is one Han Solo went down by one point. Sure did. Uh, so did and, the autopilot. So the autopilot. So that turned from a seven point ship to a six point. I mean, from a from an eight to a six point eight to six combination. Um. So that was like a six points, and I mean, if we're completely building it out, it's yeah, title. It out. I was looking at it that at the title on the Lando Millennium Falcon title, Agile Gunner, Overtuned Modulators, Kira, Crew, Trick Shot. There you go. Right. All very useful upgrades for Han. Yeah. And then we have one point left over, so uh, click Vizago in case I need to get that over to somebody else mm. or need to get. Uh, so that's a crew, uh, which allows you to change uh, elicits with other with other ships. Uh, another ship that that again I was happy to see and extended is Constable Zubio. Um, with 23 point loadout and and again I'm not building a good list I'm building stuff that I want to <laughs> uh, wait, wait, and I had me, cloaking device for... yeah oh uh, yeah cloak it pattern was cl cloak pattern seismic and proxy gross so yeah so the again with possible Zubia what it allows you to do it allows you to if you would, if you would drop a device, you may launch it using the instead. I wish I can get um, genius on him, but it's all right. We'll survive without genius, and he can also do um, tracking for the people that don't remember what time codes were about. Uh, a, another ship that I really missed was uh, Tel Trevora. And uh, yeah, so Tal Travera recently went down to five points. What's six? Recently went down to five points, yep. And she comes back to life. Is it she? I think it's she, right? It's he, she. Uh, um, they, they come back. We're gonna to life. go with a standard they. Gotcha. So they come back to life after being dead, uh, with overtuned modulators synced. Laser cannons to actually go to gun, um, and I had um, good calculation combination. U U I I. Quill, is what? Yeah. <laughs> Quill uh, fixes your ship for an action. 
a chance to picture yeah. a ship as an action. Yeah, just basically make it annoying. You can all, I, I, I'll, you can also go with. So th there's two different things. So you can go with Q. I, I could go with Q U I I, or Quill, or uh, just to be more supportive of other ones, you can also go with Gamut Key. Mm. And uh, ion torpedoes, so that you can ionize people and and do stuff like that. If I wanted to break stuff, I would actually just go straight to uh, to get to with and with um, four lamb static discharge rings. But I, I don't want to break stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to make enemies. <laughs> um, and then like uh, you know, there's so many good five point ships. Like uh, what's his name? Guri is good again. But in this particular case, going like going big fatty, I would probably just go with Manoru, and I know Manoru you can play before, but just I would just go with like a, a very boring old Manoru with yeah. uh, punishing one R five P eight, overtune modulator, notorious and baffle. But again, it's just just a couple a couple big bases going around, um, a lot of health. Not necessarily good, but there, there's a lot of good stuff. And, and of course, you get you can also do the, the other. My, my head also went to a triple IG with a mining guild, so you get basically four ships, three, three IGs with mining guild. Uh, they would probably be the uh, BCD for me. All of them with proton cannons, fearless, uh, fearless proton cannons, and different bombs like a proton, a seismic, and an ion. With all of them delayed, all of them contraband, and just being, um, yeah, it's just the, the, you're to me D over A there for the calculate passing. You'd rather have the the options the, for uh, K turning. Yeah, because it gives the options K turning to all three of them, and then also another thing you can do with these, by the way, is you can go collision detected. That that's that's available again. Um, or maybe it was available before, but anyway, you can go with collision detector, and then you make those um, those R three loops matter more. So you can go with, like collision detector and contraband cybernetics and just. But anyway, that's not what I was doing. I was doing um, I was and I was not doing advanced sensors on any of those things. I, I was just looking to see what. Yeah, yeah. What, what, I know that's where your mind goes. To. You're like, I want to uh, boost it the, the game. It was the only thing holding back. Uh, aggressors, in my opinion, is the advanced uh, sensors. Advanced sensors getting getting nerfed there a little bit. Yeah, because um, you get you could... the boost, and then from the boost you generate an evade, and then you right. If you have and then you do exactly. uh, and or no, you, uh, the evade is an action, which is the another change that uh, kind of penalized them. It is. But what isn't an action is the extra calculate token. So you can still get two calculates. And then do your K turn oh. or whatever. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, um, but yeah, I would I would go B C D because the A gives you the, the smallest loadout. It's like eleven loadout compared to the other guys that are sixteen or fifteen. Makes sense. Uh, and then when you get an ion bomb, seismic bomb, proton bomb, all of them with proton cannon, so that you can um, threaten the four die out of the middle. Fearless on all of them, contraband on all of them. Um, yes, yeah, I mean, with eight health and three agility, you're going to be okay with them not having a token every once in a while. Very true. Uh, how much yeah, it, 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 on these? We talked about them earlier. Huh? Oh, also eight, eight points. So, eight points, what? at least on one of them. Well, the one where you not even bring a cannon, the one that needs a cannon can't take it. Which I was just looking at advanced cannon? sensors and self device. What uh, and only one of them can even bring that combination. So, wait, you said some of them can't take cannons? No, uh, just for the specific one that B can take advanced sensors and self device, but can't take a cannon, and that's oh, their whole sure. that's their whole ability is the double shot cannon. Yeah, oh, well, just... actually, nobody ever pays attention to double shot. Just don't put that cannon in there. Just don't worry about those. Yeah, gotcha. Anyway, um. A million things to build. And then you, I mean, I'm not going to build it, but Talon Bane at four points is interesting. Captain Nim is playable. Uh, Forlam passing out stress with, you know, you can do advanced sensors Forlam again. So advanced sensors, triple zero Forlam. Uh, 
is uh, the GA G one A starfighter is 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 a uh, a thing again. So a lot of fun stuff. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, just like Talon Bane at four and Gary at five, uh, two I fives out there to start your squad building. Not a bad start either. No, nine points. Yeah. Could be some interesting stuff. Um, well, uh, we are run, we're hitting our time, so not yeah, that we right. got to do these quickly, but we do got to move on. Uh, yeah. Ryan, James, who wants to take the next one? Uh, mine's pretty easy. Uh, okay. doing Republic. Republic. Uh, so I wanted to go back to one of my lists that I ran for a long time, uh, that I really enjoyed. Uh, and that uh, two in ones, Luminara, Click, and Shock T. So uh, I, I am springing for Padme, even though uh, she did go up a point. Uh, but still, uh, like, like I said, excited to get that Anakin in there as well. So Padme, Anakin, uh, Luminara, Click, Click and, and Lumi. Shock T. And Shock yeah. T. Okay. So Shakti letting uh, these uh, in ones come in with that extra focus or evade or what whatever they need. Uh, if they need to be a little bit more defensive, uh, probably focuses though. That way they can take their lock actions as needed. Mm -hmm. uh, click to reduce those range bonuses if uh, I'm not getting any locks, which is definitely possible at initiative four. And uh, to prevent, prevent range one bonuses as well. Uh, and just be fast. Go get objectives. Uh, and uh, Luminara and Padme just work so well together. Uh, flipping a attacker's hit to a focus. And then Padme saying you can't use that focus anymore. So I do see uh, a pretty lot strong. of these pilots got reduced lowdown. Uh, how do you tackle a situation like that? We kind of mentioned Anakin's options already. Um, yeah, so what about I think like for a... oh, yeah, ahead. Anakin, I, I just went plasma fire control. I may, I may get, may get may get another use out of it. You could definitely go advanced protons alternatively. It's just really kind of taste on if you think you can land that advanced proton in initiative four. True. Uh, for Padme, uh, she didn't really <laughs> like she she has everything she needs: passive proton and R four P. So she's happy with that. Oh boy! Uh, and then click the proton. Yeah, yeah, passive proton R four P. Yeah. Well, she's five point ship now. Yeah, she's five point ship. She should <laughs> she should be able to get all that right. Uh, she's more strength than the zoom tier. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luminara uh, has patience uh, P seventeen. Um, uh, and just eating that extra loadout. Her. Yeah. Uh, real quick, what's something I wanted to say? Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna amend my sad. Uh, Mace in the uh, Delta Seven cannot take R four P seventeen. Sad. Seven in either one of his configurations. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, at least uh, the the calibrated he can't, huh? Yeah, calibrated he can't. Yeah. Big big sad. Uh, for for poor Mace there. That was the first thing I did. I was like, can I get? Mace with uh, uh, P17 there, and no. No, you had to spend all five points to get him up to the 7B version. And then yeah. it's his only upgrade. And then it's his only upgrade, yeah. It, it's it's a little sad. Mace is a good ship, though. Uh, also, can't take... Uh, oh, what, what is it? The... Uh, up, up, up on initiative. Heightened perception. Yeah, did heightened go up to four? It went to five. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he was the only one you'd be using it though. Like yeah, if. Like, oh. <laughs> um, so we did that, uh, and then click. Uh, of course, has R three, uh, and I opted just for marksmanship at two. Um. I really didn't see anything else in there. I could maybe make an argument for Ion Limiter Override, but just a uh, R3, Marksman Chippen-esque. Uh, you could go Sloops with Precision if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, like I said, you, you, can make it a, you can make an argument for one of those. But 
I like the. I like the I like marksmanship, marksmanship and uh, uh, the free esque. Then. Yeah. That's exactly. A good combo. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, shock T. Um, real simple, just throw an ion cannon. Uh, you could go and and mess around with all the force upgrades. Mainly patience is what is the one you'd want to aim for. Mm-hmm. But Ion Cannon just giving a three die gun at no matter the range is always going to be good. Yeah, just looking for a little consistency there. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. It, it looks like uh, I haven't looked at Republic at all, but it looks like for a lot of these more popular ships, uh, hard choices on loadout. You can't. Yeah. Get, um, the, the, the combination of upgrades that you want. Yeah, I think uh, there was maybe a Nova game this weekend. I think that was someone was flying Shakti and Yoda or something. Yeah, and I was like, man, I, re- yeah, I really nice. should put more of these uh, Adas on here. I think it was. Oh yeah, Cameron, <laughs> their dice van. The whole game was just. Like, <laughs> I think I I, I so was bad. working and I I had, I had to mute it and put it on the other screen for a little bit and I I I literally looked away for five minutes. I looked back and like all of the shits were gone. And I was like, what happened? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and all all I all I see in the chat is natties. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's just like hit hit, um, hit hit. Yeah, bad bad matchup, bad scenario. Um, they were playing chance and. Um, yeah. Oh, neutral, neutral matchup, but bad scenario, and yeah, they they couldn't roll a, an evade on green dice uh, when they needed to, and their opponent was just while they were taking modified shots, were just rolling hits out of hand. So uh, they they flew their butt off, but you know the dice god said no in that matchup. What yeah. Yeah, what, what what can you do? Yeah, I yeah. So, uh, but this is like a going back to old school for me. Uh, I think my only ch- change I had before was Wolf was in there instead of, uh, I think Shock T. So just a a big mm-hmm. beefy boy, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and you could definitely still do that with a customizable Wolf. Or, or you could go uh, down to the uh, Jag for SOC. Jag, Jag is the uh, remaining SOC uh, four point arc. Um, and so he still has that born for this. Could be still, a good... still has veterans. Still has R four P. Synchronized could be very, very helpful as well. So, and and of course the born for this. Interesting. All right, I like it. Uh, so taking an old old list uh, and seeing uh, putting it through uh, the beta points to see what comes out on the other side. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, what faction have you chosen? So I have chosen the Separatists, um, which may not shock a lot of people. Granted, I haven't played them in a long time. Um, but I always got to check in my little droids. See what kind of many ship list I can put together. <clears throat> um, I'll probably start with something that's uh, probably a little more in line with something I would actually try, but um, it's uh, something that brings a lot of good stuff that sort of already existed and just it dropped some of the costs and or stuff shifted. So uh, Sunfock, for example, um, had no squad point change, but he had a loadout change. And he sure can take and snare and afterburners now. <laughs> By the way, uh, the chassis ability of the Nantex pinpoint tractor array has the same timing as afterburners. So uh, Sunfog can be in a lot of really weird places with afterburners. So afterburners and snare and whatever, Predator. Sure, sounds great. Um, predator or Lone Wolf, depending on the, the ship size or the ship count in your squad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grievous is now four points. That's mm. amazing. That sounds great. Uh, you have to choose between outmaneuver and uh, whatever. How much is outmaneuver now? Outmaneuver is nine. nine so you, you have to choose between outmaneuver and Solus one. Uh, I'm gonna start with Solus one and be still extremely happy about that. He's just a tank. He's almost like so hard to kill at that. Like four points might not even be worth attempting to kill him anymore. <laughs> Or the amount of effort you have to put over to yeah. take him out. Seven health. I'll take Grievous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
secret mitigation um, from Impervium? We had a shift in the HMPs uh, where <clears throat> um, there's still two three-point hems, but they're different. Uh, they're now the Genosian prototypes, the two pipped ones, the ones that are I2 that have cannons. Uh, they have enough loadout to take sync laser cannons. So two HMPs with sync laser cannons sounds that's that's reasonable. I'd try it. Three die attack ships with uh with uh at side slips for three points with sturdy amounts of health. It's one agility, but they get in weird spots with side slips. Um, and then you have two points left. If Whatever, throw the new energy shell charges on it. Maybe you need to shoot something and you still have a calculate token left over and you want to guarantee they won't get the ring. Or you want to crit. You need to crit, throw the energy shell charge. Sure. Um, so two of those, and then you're left with five points, which is, I, I found out, five points for a single ship is in a really weird spot with separatists. You may as well try and split that into a three-pointer or a two-pointer. Uh, I think I'll double-check looking even around. even think of a five-point ship other than... Sounds I mean, Grant, we're, we're, we're in a new point threshold or new point system right now, but with the next WA, but there is there's the Sith Infiltrator 066, who's five points, oh. which is not a high enough consideration for me to go after. Granted, they did add the title onto that now, but lost a crew slot. So it's really just like a. And still doesn't have the relay. It eh, doesn't have the relay. That's big, right? I would have considered it with a relay, maybe. Um, I'm not taking a generic Nantex for five points. I can't take ensnare. I uh, is there any other five pointer? No, that's literally it. It's only 066, the Petronaki okay. Arenas. So, um, when you're left with five points in Separatist, you're doing a three pointer, two pointer, flat out. Uh, which the two pointer, uh, if I want, if I have an ace running around like Sunfock, I want him to be a little more secure. I'm going to take the now two-pointer, uh, DFS311, our friendly Butterbot, passing out Calculate tokens everywhere with independent calculations. Yep, takes two that Calculates. Seems... They can throw one to a friendly at the start of combat yep. at range zero. Just cobying those Calculates around, right? Yep. It's like, hey, guess what, Sunfox? You're a Force user now. You get to Calculate it's every round. It's probably Sunfox. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now three pointers. So this one's where it, where it gets interesting because, uh, you could do a tri fighter reasonable. You could do a, uh, what else am I looking at? Uh, you could do one of the new Nantex that are three points to get for or Gorgol. I don't know which one or those, you know, what kind of you're look, thing you're looking at there. Um, or you could do a hyena, which a lot of people are like focusing in on the the two point hyenas. Like, yeah, I'm gonna try those out. Which is cool, you should. They're new and they're new two pointers. But one thing that did get a change reverted what it used to is uh, the bombardment drones. Uh, used to be taken quite a bit uh, in AMG uh, point land, and they increased their load up by one. But also proximity mines went down to seven. So I'm going to take one of those bombardment drones probably, see how that plays out, especially when I get to tractor stuff onto them, right? Uh, if we recall, there used to be a list in early AMG points that was triple bombardment drones, the proximity mines, Grievous, and Sunfock. Well, now that list, you could run that list again, and it now just has DFS 311 added to it. Um, so beyond also the usage of the HMPs, you could make those HMPs into two more of those high enough bombardment drones that have proximity lines and your choice of either independent calculations because you have two points left over to use it on or your one point delayed fuses, which is, allows them flexibility in dropping and running over. Yeah, you can run over your own bomb. Uh, yep. Because I do believe you put the bomb down and then choose to fuse the dirt not. Correct. Yes. So you, you see you get it to see where table. it lands. Yep. And if it doesn't hit the ship you thought it might, you might want to throw a little fuse on it so you don't hit yeah. it. Yeah. So I would probably try, I mean, I'm personally going to probably try out the eight, the two HMP, one bomb, bombardment drone version first because I'm more curious to see how those HMPs play out and even just having one bombardment drone see how effective it is and if I feel like I want more of them. There's probably a correct ratio of do I want three bombardments and no HMPs, one HMP, two bombardments, two two HMPs, and one bombardment we have now. 
I like that as a baseline. Other than that, it's like what crazy eight ship droid swarm kind of put together because it's mostly it's uh, I'm always taking Grievous right now. That for four points is kind of insane. Um, but then you just partner it with like, you know, Grievous is off doing his own thing. And then here's Captain Seer with his just array of vultures everywhere. And it's just a matter of do you go the K2B4 route that like you can spend a calc to uh, add and evade unless your opponent attacking takes a strain. Uh, with a bunch of independent calculating vultures, you still take DFS 311. Uh, you take two Hey Archal prototypes. Um, they can also take independent calc and their I1, they'll move easy with 311. But now we have the precise hunters that are now two points instead of three points. They don't really have enough loadout to take a reasonable cannon. They literally can only take jamming beam. But they have their I3 and actually have the ability to reroll their attack dice while performing attack in its bullseye. So they have like a light predator ability. And if you already want to get stuff in bullseye with Seer, you have Predator, Crack Shot on an I3 Vulture. That's maybe. Um, or alternatively, you go the mass energy shell charge version, take Kraken on Seer, and just put a bunch of energy shell versions out there. There's probably even a, a trim down version that uses the, those two HMP droids so they can hold on to those tokens for the network calc friends since no one's taking independent calc anymore. And then have 311 with energy shell charge, hold a token with Kraken, have the two HMPs hold a charge, hold a calculate with Kraken, and then the two hair, other hair charles with energy shell charges. So you either have the, the mass energy shell charge that is all about the offensive output of the alpha strike with three dice or you go with the a little more reserved uh k2b4 more defensive punishes them for uh not letting you be a little more defensive with the strains yada yada so there's a couple of droid swarm variations that could exist but i'd probably start out with the sun fought grievous plus good stuff that is cheap all right very cool yeah seeing the the effect of energy shells versus independent where you cannot get both has been very interesting and keeps these two pointers having uh what what uh ali and the points team uh the the key word for this was choice wanted what they wanted to give choices um granted not everybody's gonna have a choice i think this grievous uh will probably come with the new standard loadout for him but but that's just one one ship out of many many there will be some people who probably will highly consider outmaneuver instead of solace one i currently believe solace one is the right choice but uh because it, it's like the the mind game of oh it's grievous it's on the board i'm never going to look at that because it's now four points and it has solace one in pervium and it's like never going to die never be worth the, the investment to kill but if you bring out maneuver, I suddenly will shoot at him now, a whole lot more. Now you're you're inviting danger, you know. Yeah, you want you're inviting danger, danger, but also it might leave stuff in the rest of your list more open to, like not like Grievous draws that attention now versus he never drew it with Solus one. So I don't, sure. maybe there's maybe. a counter interplay there, but I would just rather like me as a numbers guy and more want more consistent reserve basis. I'd rather just take the, I'm going to be as hard to kill as possible and still output some pretty decent damage even without out maneuver. The obvious choice is Lone Wolf, Proton Rocket, and Pervium, but, you know, uh, we'll see. I think Gre Grievous' ability technically is attack, not primary. It is right? attack. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. You, you, it works on Proton Rockets if they're outside of, if you're not in their arc. It works. I used to put a lot of proton rockets on Grievous, but reduced loadout. Now, making tough choices there for Grievous. Uh, you had to make those sacrifices to get that Solus One title. Uh, uh, I believe I said I was doing Imperial. No one else did Imperial, so I'm going back Imperial for no for one reason and one reason only, and it's the Lambda. I want. I saw Psy, Lieutenant Psy at four points, and I'm gonna 
that's my starting point for the Imperial faction. Uh, the, traditionally, a five-point ship. Now, uh, reduced down to just four at, to see if um, the reduced loadout and reduced cost uh, could still keep them viable. Lieutenant size ability after you perform a coordinate. If the ship you chose performed an action on your action bar, which for reference is focus, reinforce, and jam, you may perform that action. So most of the time, coordinates a focus, so I get to focus. That's just generating extra tokens uh, for free. Though their loadout significantly got reduced, uh, so you can pretty much only take the title now. Uh, which I don't even know what the other options would be, but well, I'm not even looking at them because I only care about the title. After you perform a coordinate action, you can choose an enemy ship at range 0 to 3 of the ship you coordinated. If you do, acquire a lock. So, four points, gives a focus token, and can get focus target lock for their attack. Granted, you might not be reinforcing ever, unless you're coordinating a ship with reinforce. Uh, but a lot of modification, a lot of action generation. The only problem is yet to fly uh, a large base with one of the worst dials in the game, if not the most, the worst dial in the game. Um, so uh, that's that's mainly where my mind uh, went to. I love the coordinating of signs, so much extra uh, actions. Uh, then uh, I want some aces. Uh, so I was looking through, um, well, we've been talking about it, the soon tier, uh, saw that uh, four tier is what I've been calling them, uh, goes down to just four points, one loadout, and specifically no uh, configuration. So it cannot take sensitive controls, which is a bummer for me as I prefer the sensitive controls version, but uh with a coordinator out there, you can receive a focus and then uh, say reposition. So kind of like a preposition still, if Sai is helping you out. Uh, your choices are uh, targeting computer or ruthless. And I'm just going to take targeting computer. There's If there's a coordinator out on the board um, or soon tier gets on the flank where you could say target lock, boost into bullseye. Now you have focus lock, boom, another ship out there. Uh, reasonably costed. Um, I'm actually going to look for another ace as well. Uh, and another one uh, that went down in price was Duchess. I-5 has the options to ailerons or not, uh, which is very interesting to me. First thing I'm going to look for on Duchess is, can I take fifth brother? And the answer is yes. But, ooh, but it's my only upgrade then. I don't know what I think about that. Uh, so definitely viable. I'm going to look at outmaneuver and a three point upgrade outmaneuver predator. Uh, that's interesting. I'm probably going to leave it at that outmaneuver predator. Uh, again, I have a coordinator, so maybe I can get focus evade. So I won't have to worry too much about my offense. And I would really prefer fifth brother and a target lock or fifth brother and predator so i can take an evade and then double modify my attack but that's the one thing you can't do so uh we'll just leave it without maneuver and predator try that out uh that kind of same thing of like well you have to look at duchess which means you're not looking at the rest of my squad potentially uh so i have my tank my my support ship and i got two aces out there budget aces uh, so I'm just looking for more frontline troops then. Somebody out there with some beef uh, to block some shots. Uh, and I saw Flight Leader Ubel went down in price uh, to just four points now. Gets I-5, gets a bonus attack um, if a uh, damage card is dealt to a friendly. Uh, so we just slap on uh, a good cannon. Uh, one of the... Oh, target assist went down too. Or down to zero. Um, but I'm never going to not have a green token. So I think I'm just going to take the maneuver assist on them. Uh, and I bet I can't get agile now. Oh, agile going up to four points. Uh, so I'm not sure what else I would take. Ruthless. Um, oh, yeah. 
Probably ruthless. You got a cow. You got, you got, you got a cow around. It's already kind of made us pass. Time to just take some damage. Yeah, I guess. Is there's not really unless I'm taking. Uh, no. Ion limiter. No. Yeah, probably just ruthless. Let's just get some get some offense out there, uh, especially because Ubel has the the rear arc. You could rotate your sink to the back. So yeah, maybe Lambda gets stuck in the scrum, but Ubel gets to go out. So. Uh, plink some damage into the side there. Uh, plus, as well, then one of the main reasons I'm bringing Ubel is I want a ship with reinforce in my squad. So, so I can give Ubel the reinforce and she gets one, them, or they get one themselves. Um, which is not, like I said, norm normally it's just focus action, but I want somebody to be able to uh, get a reinforce on Sai if she ends up being the target. Uh, then I'm just looking for another beefy ship out there. Um, actually, how much is Grant? Grant's still five. You know what I would do even? Four points. I know it went up, but we all talked about how it would be just as good to highly consider this ship in Empire if it went up in points, assuming it was going to go up. But the Bomber Pack SL Tomax, the Plasma Torpin, double modded, sounds great to shoot before... Ubel and Duchess when Duchess gets to fifth bro crit stuff. Uh yeah, the time bomber TBE. Expansion. TBE, yeah. Uh I like that because it kind of fits my I5 Aces theme here. Semi tanky. Uh because uh It's all haul for Ubel. Oof, yeah, more haul. Um I was I was thinking uh how I did want I I with the amount of success Faroth is having. Um, I was looking at Faroth as well. Faroth is good too. You also I guess... do I know you like I know you like Merrick having a coordinator out there. Have you have you I mean Lieutenant Kestel is interesting. Oh, the aggressor. The aggressor. Uh yeah. It's got nineteen got, loadout. Four points, reduced. nineteen loadout. I guess that's true. If I'm not taking fifth brother on Duchess, I could take fifth brother on uh, Kestel. Kestel says you can spend your focus to cancel all of your opponent's yeah, focus and but he, points. But he gets barrage cool. rockets. So that's, that's what I like about him. I mean, not with you. Get what both? you... Oh, not no, with not both. Brother, though. Because I was thinking like you can get ion turret and barrage rockets and just... It says attack, so it's not necessarily on your primary. So you can cancel results on the ion or on the barrage. And that still gives you five points to I'll take veteran um, turret gunner in case I end up shooting a primary. Yeah, I mean we don't have to, You're but ruthless. anything. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just, that's not exactly here, the tank I'm looking for, but it's not a tank, will. but it's just. Uh, what I, about I, uh, Echo or a Phantom? Echo uh, would be pretty interesting um, as one of my ace options, but I I feel like in this I I want I want the line troops. Um, I think um, I think the Reaper, like you mentioned, Eros probably one of your best options for sure. Yeah, mostly just because my list is based around Psy. Uh so uh, it's a ship now who has that uh, jam action. Because, like I said, Psy Psy has a jam action. So in the in the instance, you could coordinate a jam to Faroth, who's also the same initiative. Psy and Faroth are the same initiative three. So you can move in, Faroth, uh, take a, uh, actually, the funny way to do it is Faroth moves, coordinates Psy, a coordinate, which Psy then coordinates a jam, which then both ships jam. Psy then moves and clears the stress of the jam and now has option to, say, like, reinforce if they want. Uh, so really just trying to get more options for Psy to be able to use their ability outside of just here's a focus token soon tier kind of thing. But it ends up being uh yeah three tanks out there. Uh well one support ship uh slash tank and then two tanks out there and uh two aces. So I... this is weird to consider. Yes. But if this is an upgrade we've never looked at because it's always had a, 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 a low value. But I wonder if angled deflectors 
on Faroff is mathematically worth it. It's one cost, you lose one shield, but if Faroff can consistently make his one agility be an evade and you're reducing the, like, he will only really ever take, as long as they don't have a green token anymore, one damage, because you're reducing it from one from your agility and one from a reinforce. Right, you set down the reinforce, or the, the reinforce adds one, and you're just going to put down a reinforce token. I think I'd rather, yeah. I would not be taking uh, Tactical Officer, I'd be taking Hark in that combination. Probably. Because uh, your your main action is going to be coordinate, or main action is going to be uh, reinforce instead of coordinate. Uh, that is interesting. I did see Angle Deflectors went down to one because it has such a big penalty of removing the shield. But I do like that. It gives me another um, person to coordinate reinforces off of as well. Uh, the same I still time. could be completely wrong, but it's like interesting where Faroff is one of those ships where, as one agility, very consistently makes it an evade because of its ability. Mm -hmm. Can it do it enough? I, I, someone would have to check the math on that for me, or I will. I don't know. It, See, it sounds good. Is that, is that minus one health worth how many more mitigated damage? Because uh, you you have to get at least two. I would even say three because uh, you could just take an evade action with them. So you're going to need to negate three damage with that reinforce. And I think the hardest thing would just be convincing your opponent to shoot a Faroth while they're reinforced. It's also the fact of like you would need to actually take the reinforce action because there are times at which it still feels very valuable to take a focus action on Faroff to make your offense more dangerous with focus ruthless. Well, that's why I put Hark in there, is that you could actually coordinate Faroff the reinforce before they do a red maneuver, like a red stop. Oh, for sure, yeah. So now you have uh, the best of both worlds. Um, and that's really, like I said, what the especially after seeing Faroff using Tactical Officer in the last couple tournaments, uh, um, Gen Con and um now nova uh the what do i want to say it was it was a statement that i had for a long time was like who's coordinating anymore in x-wing we don't see sheet the beads we don't see uh well Sai and the lambda shuttles were banned basically they were in extended and reapers were more concerned about jamming and their three dice primary that they weren't really coordinating as much in the past. Um, but now I was, like I said, with Faroff being, you know, a dedicated coordinator in some list, um, I think Sai could, could essentially take that place and be uh, that kind of uh, ship to say, because what was Duncan's list? Well, Duncan's list is definitely not legal anymore. Uh, every, I think every one of his, Shifts went up in point, but you could find some uh, all but all but Faroth, yes, yeah, all but Faroth. Uh, but if we recreated it, uh, a Vader, a Jenden, and I only have two point points left after my coordinator, so a TIE fighter. Um, still, Sai out there coordinating focuses to Jenden could be pretty cool as a new way of doing it. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. I'm. I will say that I'm still very much in the five ship mindset, right? I want five ships who can modify their dice easily uh, and can either take damage or give it, right? And that's. Um, I'm not sure what I, how I think about it. Will Will everybody find that same result? Will people still reach for those five and six point ships? in their faction to uh, get their list down to only four ships. Uh, that's kind of up in the air. Uh, like you said, only three factions even have access to two point ships or less. So all those other factions are limited to three to six ships only. Uh, Will, here's a, here's a fun four point option for you. Would you take a auto blaster major vendor? Slamming around with advanced slam and marksmanship. Uh, mm, I did see Major Vendor with four points, twelve loadout, so can't take proton torpedoes and only they increase they, the proton count. Yeah, 
Yeah, only if they took advanced proton, they get uh they only get advanced slam with it. So also not. And Vendor uh, doesn't have doesn't have the capability to generate two cannon slots. So you can't take sync. I was like, because that's what I was looking for. Can I take a sync laser, mm, slammy yeah. crazy guy around? Uh, answer is no. But I was like, oh, auto blaster, a banned card originally. Like, can we do something with this here? Yeah, on an i four, probably not as badly as you know other things. But uh, I've I've been my next thing in, is once we I get away from my pocket aces is uh yeah just taking every three point ship i can uh there's i don't uh karsabi is why i'm mentioning yep. karsabi karsabi's a three, three point. point uh uh alpha class star wing uh, who uh, loves the assault configuration where you just uh go out there and shoot your ion cannon um and i think it's advanced slam ion cannon yeah Yep, that's then, really uh, reasonable for a three-point ship, in my opinion. Three-point aggressor, double edge. Double edge, yeah. Like I said, there's there's a different style of list there. I'm just spamming all the three-point ships I can uh, to get a uh, uh, a six or seven ship list in there. So uh, again, a lot of options, a lot of new things to look at. Um, so that's definitely what I would encourage people. Uh, I like how, um, we're all, we're all kind of approached list uh, a little bit differently. James and Marcel, uh, trying to recreate older lists to see, you know, put, putting them through that beta points filter to see what kind of comes out on the other side. Whereas, uh, me and Ryan are kind of looking at, uh, more, uh, how do we, uh, build a old archetype with new cheaper pilots put in uh in those same kind of roles um so i'm, I'm sure everybody's just going to be different um i will say that i i can't imagine any list survived the beta points from um amgs i i don't even know what list would have because everything got changed a little bit yeah even if you go to like the sequel factions that have no sls because the sls are probably the most commonly hit thing that were mm -hmm. prevalently used i think even the resistance stuff generally the t70 pilots kind of swapped which ones are now five and which ones are four and then for first order, maybe there's something in first order because I think, uh, well, Malice went up. Kylo, and, and Kylo, Kylo silencer went down. went down one and lost a lot of loadout, but Malice went up. So there may be a like, like Doug's Kylo Lahus and three tie FOs. Like he probably technically could run that, but they would have different loadout as long as Scorch. Uh, Gaelic went up a point, but you could just find oh, Gaelic's four now. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, well, I mean, you, you could technically so. take Gaelic or, but I, we'd be switching pilots, so no. There's no, I like I said, nothing I can think of immediately. Uh, there's um, very, very few ships who, um, or lists that kind of um, weren't using something strong uh, that would have gotten changed uh, or got cheaper, right? Um, a lot of things, uh, like I said, a lot of movement. I will say, for my first and like overall, my first impression, a lot more changes than I was expecting. A lot more shakeup than I would have originally uh, even hoped for, uh, which I think is good. Push the boundaries, right? With the new extended uh, or band list stuff and extended pilots and stuff. And then work your way backwards uh, to uh, something uh, more uh, stable, I guess, more balanced, if you will, but kind of pushing, uh, to me, it's pushing that boundary, uh, early and then we'll have six months to kind of work back, uh, any changes that might have on there. Uh, yeah, I think all, the, like almost all the lists out of that, uh, Nova are like 23 points. No, I, I would imagine so. Cause they're all bringing, um, BOE stuff. They're all bringing standard loadouts, right? Well, even like the Empire ones that were in there. 
Yeah, well, they all have Tomax and Jenden. Yeah. So, I will see. I I think it's a lot of stuff in the right direction. And, of course, a couple of things that we're keeping our eye on. But overall, I think it should reinvigorate discussions, list building, uh, dice math, right? Jousting values of what lists and factions can even accomplish. And for the most part, I would agree. Um, or I would say that the emphasis on choice has been successful. A lot of hard choices to be made out there. No, no real easy answer on uh, the best list in a faction. Or, or even just like the best loadout now. I think there's best a lot loadout, even like yeah. loadout, loadout changes have uh, kind of shaken up. Very true. Very true. Uh, which I said uh, before, I mean, that's good. Uh, we needed a shake up. That's, I think that was what Marcel said was as good. Just literally anything uh, to shake up uh, list building. As I think we're all kind of we're all kind of list builders rather than net listers. Though I do traditionally use that knowledge to influence my own list building. Uh, super exciting. We're way over our time, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking more. Uh, if you have uh, questions, I don't think I ever did put in our Discord, um, like feedback and list uh, submissions and stuff. So I'll probably work on that tomorrow. Get like a specific place to talk about community points, community list, rules, questions, and things like that f specifically for these new beta points. We'll put that all in. Um, in our discord but of course um, the a lot of the discussion is happening on the 2.5 discord that's where you're going to see announcements uh, for the uh, x-wing alliance uh, and of course you got to check out xwing.life is the website to get those pdfs and other information and updates on the alliance they've been um, putting through a lot of work, a lot of hours. Um, like I said, I think they said like over 50 alpha testers, um, submitted information for this stuff. So it certainly is not, uh, just one person. And I think that's the, uh, the biggest takeaway for me it, or the not takeaway, but biggest thing I would want to emphasize is that, uh, please look at these points um objectively do not uh you know i don't want to see pitchforks for ollie being like why why did you not put the config or why did you make a one point escape craft or think anything like that uh it was not just one person it was not just one opinion that created all of these and hopefully in the future then it's all of our opinions that kind of craft these uh different changes and things and uh, we can, um, through that kind of effort, we could find a game that everybody continues to enjoy. And that's really the, the main goal, right? Is to have X-Wing, not just in 2015, or two, 2015, 2025, but 2026, 27, 28, right? And for as long as we possibly can. So uh, very exciting stuff. Anything else um, I missed or less, less thoughts on the points? No, just uh, uh, good seeing you guys again. It's been a minute. I think I missed like the last six weeks or so, five weeks, four weeks. I don't even know how many weeks. So good seeing you guys. And it looks like I mean, we made up the whole five or six weeks in today. <laughs> yeah, three we're, hours. yeah, we're approaching almost three hours now, yeah. uh, which is uh, something I knew was going to happen. But yeah. uh, it's nice. A lot to talk about, which is exciting. Um, there's there was many weeks where now was that we're just kind of on a holding pattern, waiting for things to happen. So exciting! We'll probably be breaking down these factions and like upgrades more individually uh, in the coming future podcast episodes. Um, I'll be excited to talk more about them, um, but we'll. Uh, to be announced uh, when our future podcasts are. Speaking of, me and James are going to be playing some 
uh, new points this Wednesday. Um, we're on the schedule for uh, the streams. Uh, that was part of the announcements that uh, each day this week there will be different streams going out for the games. Um, uh, 312, Nickel City, Us, uh, and now I'm forgetting the other two. But um, anyways, a lot of streams going on. Watch, go and find uh, Nick and Ollie's uh, stage talk video where Ollie and them kind of discuss in more in depth about the, the decision points and stuff for the uh, changes. Um, that was a very interesting video to hear them kind of discuss it. And I, I think that's overall been a great thing. The, the Alliance can do things AMG cannot, which is beta points, a full open transparent discussions about what's being changed and really taking player feedback uh, the general audience feedback um, outside of just the specific play testers. So uh, a lot of potential in the future. So I'm very, very excited for it. Uh, so hopefully uh, you all are as well. I'm going to put a link in our discord. Just like I said, if you want to talk about them, if you got any questions, hit up our discord. Uh, we can get you either uh, the information or send you to the appropriate place. Of course, uh, all of this, uh, doesn't overshadow the grand tournaments that are happening. I know there's a bunch still coming up. So even, even if you are excited about new points, still we want you to head out to those grand tournaments. It's very vital for these event organizers to get players in there. So again, they can if they can get players in this year, they can get players in next year, right? They they. Uh, we'll need your support in keeping those events alive um, for the uh, rest of the season. And then after that, who knows? We'll find out more um, after Worlds and after uh, May about the future of kind of uh, organized play for X-Wing. Still, very exciting stuff. Glad to be back uh, talking new things and uh, uh, hanging out with you guys. But for everybody watching, thank you so much. Uh, for joining us live we're here every monday well not every monday we're here on monday nights uh for the podcast me and james stream on wednesdays and of course uh the uh, youtube videos and the videos on demand from previous tournaments are available i did stream the nova on youtube so it's already available if you're not like a twitch person i can go and check those out uh 13 games over the weekend <laughs> And I was burnt out uh, by the end. Luckily, Chris Allen, uh, it gets a little chaotic at the end when it's when it's uh, burnt out Will and Chris Allen. Uh, but uh, still, very exciting games. Anyways, let's get out of here. Everybody at home, stay safe, stay smart. Gold, Squadron, out. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J-List, our Grand Admiral Patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron Patrons and Community Members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron, out.